Well, good afternoon, friends. Good afternoon. Hope you're doing well this afternoon, and uh, hope you're enjoying the last little bit of reasonably warm weather up there for a uh, um, mid-October day. And uh, welcome, welcome to another episode of uh, Conversations with Dune and Friends. Today we have a, a wonderful friend joining us from, I think it's the uh, British, beautiful British Columbia area. And uh, we have a, a very diverse individual. She's into all kinds of things. Uh, uh, well, uh, we'll give you the introduction and you'll you get a little bit of taste of that. And of course, if you spend the hour or so with us, uh, you'll be able to uh, get more into uh, what she's about as well as uh, uh, hear the stories and insights and, and uh, uh, learn from some of the lessons learned along the way as well. So we have uh, Mary Charlson's joining us today. And uh, Mary, can you still hear me in the green room there, my friend? Wonderful. So let me do a, a quick introduction here of uh, Mary's background. Mary Charlson is a marketing speaker, educator, and, and strategist. Uh, she's the author of two books, Word of Mouth, uh, Mouse, and, uh, and Mobile, uh, let me say that again, word of mouth, mouse and mobile, and five minutes marketing, uh, each featuring uh, tips for the uh, time-starved business leader. Mary is a member of the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers and Global Speakers Federation. Um, she is one of the fewer than 12% of the speakers globally who hold the designation uh, CSP, so Certified Speaking Professional. The International Measure of Excellence for Professionals, Competence in, uh, and Proven Experience. Mary's career sp spanned 20 years in the media, advertising, and, and education. She has been a, a popular marketing instructor at the uh, City University of Seattle, uh, NYIT, New York Institute of Technology, uh, Capilano, Capilano University, uh, Accenda School of Management, and uh, guest lecture at the UBC Sutter School of Business. Mary has worked with uh, hundreds of business and organizations to uh, improve their marketing efforts through uh, consulting and speaking. Uh, contributed to uh, uh, business in Vancouver uh, since 2002 uh, and a monthly marketing consultant, uh, marketing columnist for the Huffington Post. Her uh, work has also been published in, in the Globe and Mail and the Toronto Star, the Vancouver Sun, Marketing Magazine, Strategy, Zoomer, Cottage, and, and Outside Magazine. Mary is a frequent guest on CBC uh, TV News, uh, offering her opinion on, on marketing and business trends. And uh, let me tell you, Mary does so much more than that, and she is so much more than that, and it's gonna be an exciting and interesting conversation here. So join us. Uh, Put her on her, her hot seat a little bit, but uh, but not too much. Uh, she's a motorcycle rider, by the way. So, uh, you know, put her on, on the hot seat and uh, we're going to have some fun here. Mary, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm going to uh, uh, welcome you. Here you go. Uh, how are you today doing, Mary? I'm doing great, dude. Thanks so much for, uh, it's my pleasure to be here with you. Yeah, I, I just mixed up two words there. But uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, tell us a little bit, um, I want to hear a little bit about your background before we get into various aspects. Um, uh, how did you get here? Where were you born? Like, like, tell us a bit more about your journey there. Well, I, I was, I'm originally from Ontario, uh, mm -hmm. a small town called Sutton, Ontario. It's about an mm -hmm. hour north of, uh, of Toronto uh, by Lake Simcoe and grew up there, kind of small town girl mm -hmm. and uh, went to uh, university in Waterloo. Mm -hmm. I did my undergrad there, but uh, ventured out to Vancouver in 1987. In my uh, 1980, uh, actually, I was in uh, 1987, but in my 1977, uh, Monte Carlo with oh, my with I my love... skis on the roof and all my worldly belongings in the trunk, and uh, I stayed. <laughs> <laughs> I love that car, Monte Carlo. Who who had yeah. lived through a, a, the uh, 80s and 90s yeah. and not know the Monte Carlo, right? Oh, it, it was classic, dude. It had swivel bucket seats <laughs> and, and an 8-track player. <laughs> <laughs> swivel bucket seats. I did not know that. Yeah. Swivel bucket yeah. seats. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. It was uh, yeah, eight, V8. Went like the clappers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll hear a bit more. You're a bit of an adventurous, I, I understand. You know, I, I see your posts and I, I see other things you're into. Uh, I'm guessing that you're quite adventurous, both in the, in business and personal as well. Obviously, of course, you need to do your risk management and whatnot, but, but uh, I'm guessing you're a bit of an adventurous. 
I, I am due. And I've, I've got a number of uh, activities that I do outside of obviously, you know, my, my work, my speaking, consulting, writing takes up a, a major part of my life. But I, I like to think a well-rounded person is also engaged in a lot of other things. And I, I have a, a couple of maybe unusual uh, interests, at least for, you know, a female uh, in, in my age group. But uh, I play recreational hockey with some women on uh, a team called the Stanley Cupcakes. I, wow. I ride a motorcycle, which is, <laughs> you know, not, I just, and that's a relatively new activity. We can talk about uh, that later. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I've, I've, I do lots of different, you know, I, I kite, well, I learned to kite surf in Australia. I am, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actively uh, traveling uh, when we're, of course, we're able to travel. And, uh, and that spurred another interest of mine, sort of starting up the Carry On Queen uh, website for travel content. We can, again, lots of, lots of stuff that we can potentially get into in this conversation. Yeah. So obviously with all those balls in the air, you need a lot of energy and it seems like you do have a lot of energy. And I suppose part of it is uh, energy is a funny thing. The more you generate, the more you have, I suppose. And if you just relax and sit back and, and be sedentary, uh, you probably don't have the energy you need. And then, but then you go and do a bunch of stuff and then you build up your stamina. Tell us a little bit about how you found that over the, the years with uh, energy management, all these things that you do both for business and for fun. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that when you're active, mm -hmm. you know, I get my best ideas. Mm. when I'm doing some activity. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if I need to solve a client's, you know, kind of get some creative uh, thoughts going for a strategy, or if I'm doing some things around a social media marketing plan, or if I'm doing something like that, th the best thing I can do is go cross-country ski up in the mountains or do oh, wow. something mm -hmm. where, it, it, but I always take either a notepad or my, my phone and, I, and I, I dictate a message and or I email myself. I don't know if anybody else does that, <laughs> but I get, I get a stroke of brilliance. But it's something about the energy, uh, the endorphins, as, you know, as you're exercising, you just get these great ideas and you remove yourself from your work situation. And so uh, I often, I mean, that's, that's one reason, obviously, but another is just, you know, when you're healthy, you do have more energy and uh, it's also a, a great way to engage in activities with friends. And so, you know, a, again, a well-rounded person is you know, doing stuff. It's part of the reason why I play on a team with some ladies. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we play hockey, but uh, it's, it's about more than just the hockey. Mm -hmm. It's, it's about the friendships. It's about sharing uh, experiences as we're raising our, our kids and our mm -hmm. family. And um, a lot of the gals that I play with are the same age as me, but they had their kids, you know, kind of five, six years, uh, you know, before mine. So I got to sort of learn through them kind of what I was in for uh, five mm. years from now, which was, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it, that was kind of fun as well. So. Yeah. In other yeah. words, um, you know, you, well, they say it takes a village to raise a child and yes. it's always better to raise a child with more than just uh, on your own by yourself. Right. Yeah. It, it, ta it takes a, uh, a, a great spouse and perhaps a team of women behind you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 My, yeah. Um, very cool. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, so, so let's start with the present day and then we're going to go back and sure. we're going to look at uh, different parts, uh, different aspects there. But uh, what have you been up to um, with the COVID uh, reality and COVID context? Tell us a bit about what your typical week looked like these days. Well, you know, it's it's interesting in that, uh, of course, everything is switched online, as you know, mm -hmm. Dune. It's, uh, you know, March 10th kind of things just kind of went, er, <laughs> kind mm -hmm. of stopped. And, but I was already very comfortable with kind of the online environment and, you know, using Zoom, uh, obviously kind of ramped that up quite a bit more. But I've, I've actually been kind of invigorated by mm. the transition. I have to say, I've, uh, my, my work hasn't really dropped off at all. In fact, it actually gained more in yeah. terms of uh, opening up markets, uh, mm -hmm. you know, doing workshops, doing speaking engagements in, you know, in Australia, in India, in, you know, other parts parts of North America and still having dinner with my family <laughs> that mm -hmm. night. Uh, that's been kind of fabulous. Um, <clears throat> I also uh, teach at a uh, local university. And so all of the, the teaching went online. Yeah. And of course, that's, you know, there's, there are some folks that are kind of running for the door because it's, they're just, they're just not used to not having the face to face. And, mm -hmm. and I found ways to really kind of connect with the students and keep mm -hmm. it fun and engaging. And so I think I, I credit some of that to early on in the pandemic, I, and it was probably like March 11th, like the day after this whole thing went south, 
I um I, I started up a like a, a Friday afternoon uh, happy hour, and mm. and it was literally I just sort of put it out there to a bunch of friends, invited a number of people on global, some of them speakers, some of them you know just just colleagues that I know in other areas to come and have a glass of wine and let's talk about what's going on. And it became mm. this kind of weekly thing that I started to kind of market and you know and, and kind of do some stuff around. But it I think reflecting back, it gave me early on. A tremendous number of hours of practice mm -hmm. with the platform and and utilizing the tools, which then kind of gave that early advantage to being able to be comfortable in this new environment. So that's some of the stuff I'm doing. Uh, of course, the writing weekly for my blog, for my e-newsletter, mm -hmm. and you know, sharing helpful marketing tips and content for mm -hmm. for clients. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, very cool. Uh, I do want to uh, maybe spot a put a spotlight on uh, the point you made about uh, having kind of spent some time on, on the social side of things with mm -hmm. Zoom and with the community mm -hmm. really allows you to hone your really comfort level with that virtual environment. So, so folks, you know, when you think about changes, uh, we have to integrate change into our whole being, not just our work being but also our home or our community. And, and when we can integrate it, things just get more uh, uh, smoother, right? I mean, rather than just yeah. saying, I'm gonna do things at home a certain way. And then when I come to work, oh, how do I learn how to use this Zoom thing? No, you, you embrace Zoom and, and you say, well, this is the new world. So I'm gonna first, well, play with it. I'm gonna have fun with it. I'm gonna socialize with it. I'm gonna meet new friends with it and all of that stuff. And then by the time it comes to, I have to do it for work as well, it just transition over, right? Transfers over. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Very smart. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Now, um, tell us a little bit about, uh, uh, I mean, we can go into any which one of these, but but I'm going to go to the motorcycles. So, so okay. kind of in recent recent <laughs> past here, you got into most motorcycle riding, you know, uh, tell us a little bit about why you got into it. Uh, did you do that before or was just completely new? And uh, what was the journey? Well, I guess the, the journey, it, started originally with uh, my husband and I decided that we were going to do a, a motorbike trip on Route 66. Mm. And I and I was going to be on the back of the bike. And so it's actually routes, part of Route 66, the Grand Canyon, Zion National Park. We did kind wow. of a, a circle route out of Las Vegas. And I have to say, I don't take the back seat easily, do <laughs> 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 But I was pleasantly surprised. And, and my husband had ridden bikes, you know, on and off throughout his life. He didn't have a bike here. I mean, you know, we have a minivan, we have a family. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, but he had, you know, I, I, I trust him. He was a very safe rider. And so I rode on the back mm -hmm. and, and I was pleasantly surprised at the experience and, uh, you know, the time to sort of look, observe, reflect mm -hmm. and started to kind of get into it. Mm -hmm. And then the following year, I had an opportunity. I was accompanying my son to Spain uh, while well, he was going to the World Roller Games to compete mm -hmm. for Team Canada in uh, downhill skateboard racing. And uh, long story short, how it was in Barcelona and he needed a place to stay. And I had a, a, a friend contact there. And so it ended up that it uh, it was a, a mom accompanied trip, even though he was more than capable of having done this on his own and had traveled on his own numerous times before. So one of the ways I arranged to have uh, kind of independence there was we both rented scooters in, in Barcelona. So he could kind of go off and do his thing. I could do my thing. And so self-preservation to go and ride a scooter in Barcelona, I thought I better sign up for a motorcycle course and learn how to ride this thing kind of properly. So I, I did that. And that's kind of where I started to sort of get the feeling that maybe I could do this. And so we rented those scooters when I came back from Barcelona and, and touring around in Spain, I bought a motorbike and uh, kind of the rest is history. And so my husband and I now ride together. Wonderful. That's the... Uh... That's a great story there. Again, it starts small, you know, with yeah. something small and then you take some actions and then you have some experience and then you confirm it. So yeah, it's all about, um, well, actions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so tell us, um, do, uh, are you one of these motorcycle riders that are keep yearning for different and better, bigger motorcycle? Is that, are you in that mode yet? Or uh, will you be in that mode? <laughs> uh, my husband is yearning for me to get a bigger bike. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, my, mine is a, a Yamaha V-Star 250. It's, 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 a, it's a baby bike by, by power standards, but it's got mm. lots of chrome and I think I look pretty cool. <laughs> there you go. That's part of it, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, yeah. 
I'm going to bring in the photo here so we can reminisce a little bit. Because, you know, I mean, uh, talking about it is cool, but but it's always fun to kind of see it as well. So, so, yeah, here it yeah, is. That's, uh, that's, the, that's the scooter one in, in <laughs> Spain. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of where where it started. And uh, I, and I think I think there's I think we, there's a there's a photo of me uh, somewhere on the Sea to Sky Highway with the uh, with the with the Yamaha, too. I'm not sure if you found you that. Bet. One I it. see it. Yeah. I do see yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. it's a little bit uh, sort of uh, a number of photos away. So I'm going to okay. uh, no bring problem. it in here <laughs> to tell us about that while I bring it in. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, so which one? The um, the, the highway one the highway yeah. one so this yeah. is just uh i mean live in vancouver so we are <laughs> we are blessed with some pretty spectacular scenery and so a ride up the sea to sky highway towards whistler is is a spectacular drive so mm -hmm. this was one where my husband and i were you can see his bike in the background uh we're riding up together and so it's become this kind of fun activity that uh, you know that is you know as our kids have gotten older they're 19 and, and uh, 22 now uh, that mm -hmm. we can start embarking on some things together Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so so, uh, do you play the "Born to Be Wild" song while you're riding along <laughs> the highway? <laughs> yeah, I took some I, I took some jokes around that song when uh, when I first got the bike, uh, you know, it, from uh, you know from some uh, friends and relatives. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, good fun. Very cool. Yeah, I, I I used to have a couple of bikes back when I was 16, 17, 18. I think I sold it when I turned eighteen or nineteen, okay. um, and. Uh, they, uh, you know, they give you those licenses and they, they don't take them away. They, they actually, you know, leave it with you, right? Yeah. Like, yes. So, so uh, I think if I go back this way, I think I might see some. Oh, there you go. There's another one here. Oops, so there we go. <laughs> yes. So that's the, that's the Route 66 photo. So that's uh, my husband, Chris. And uh, that's us doing part of the historic Route 66 on the bike. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you, has the motorcycle journey so far, it's been uh, sort of recent here, uh, spawn any marketing consulting ideas uh, while you were riding? Has has the motorcycle paid for itself yet? I'm kidding. <laughs> no. I'm kidding. I was gonna say that's a stretch, dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I. You know. I think just just the um, maybe more than anything, just the realization that you're never. Uh, you know, it's never. It's it, trying something new. Mm -hmm. uh, challenging yourself for a new skill set, new mm -hmm. interests. Uh, I think uh, that's an attitude that I carry over to my to my business and my marketing. It's you're always looking to learn, yeah. always open to new ideas, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I guess it's just, it's an attitude as much as it is a skill set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I mean, I don't believe I, I I don't remember in the bio when I was um, walking through the bio for for our guest there. Uh, you did not even mention your your business degrees and all of that. I mean, you yeah. were okay. pretty serious in uh, business education and MBA, you know, masters of business uh, administration and all of that, and, and pursued a very business sort of focus uh, life for probably a, a while for a long time. Mm -hmm. And while you're doing it now, it seems like you're bringing in more of the other aspects, whether it's hockey, whether it's, uh, you know, motorcycle, whatever have you. And uh, uh, ha has that always been the case? Or was there a period in your, your life when, when you were so focused on business that, uh, you know, recreation was, was not? Uh... Well, I think, um, I mean, I'm, I'm still very, and, and make no mistake, I'm very much focused on, on the business and the marketing, uh, marketing with media, 5minutemarketing.com site. Mm -hmm. And also the you know the business around it, but I have to say a couple of years ago, and it was uh, we can actually uh, credit our, our good friend Pat Katz uh, at a conversation I had with her uh, mm. at a, at about, about the a, pause. Uh, about yes. the pause, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. And just about um, you know when you know when you start to get interested in in something else in addition, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you should go explore that. And so. Uh, that's it was kind of what prompted my my whole exploration around launching a, another brand called uh, Carry On Queen, which is kind of a travel writing content creation brand. And that's something that, uh, and I've always been known as the carry on queen because I don't check bags. I <laughs> never have, never have for business, never have for pleasure. I, I'm the queen of being able to put it all in one carry on. I've traveled, you know, for business trips, I've traveled for six, six weeks in Australia, four weeks in Europe. I can do it all in one bag, <laughs> even when it's a mixed business and pleasure kind of trip, which uh, several of those have been. And so, 
I decided to, you know, kind of launch this brand around called, you know, Carry On Queen and just apply what I knew about marketing to the brand and to also then kind of, kind of, uh, kind of, again, it's challenged myself to, you know, to learn a whole new industry. Mm-hmm. And what's, uh, what's been interesting about it is, of course, you know, when you're, when you have a business mindset, you inevitably go down that route. And so I've been able to monetize uh, some of the things around it and uh, been able to, you know, with content creation. And also curiously through the pandemic, of course, we know the travel industry has been very, very hard hit. I've been able to kind of, and I hate the word pivot, but (laughs) uh, anyway, it's so overused, (laughs) but I've been able to kind of apply Mm -hmm. my knowledge of marketing Mm-hmm. to an industry which I've become quite acquainted with and have a lot of new contacts with to be able to kind of take the best of what I know about both worlds. And so I've been, you know, engaged in in writing articles around like contact tracing, you know, how that's working. I've interviewed, uh, you know, Terry Jones, who is the, the founder of Expedia. Mm-hmm. I've been invited, you know, to speak to various associations around marketing during the pandemic and kind of applying that. Uh, but also at the same time have been able to leverage doing virtual travel presentations and mm. you know for other clients as well so it's it's really fascinating for me to see how the two worlds have kind of collided mm-hmm. uh, especially during the pandemic and that really wasn't it wasn't purposeful it's just kind of what has kind of happened and so um you know i i'm you know, I still I still call this one the the fun project off the side of my desk. Uh, yeah. Five minute marketing is my business, yeah. uh, but but this is one that I would kind of like to grow into a little bit more. You you never know. You sow seeds, and you don't know yeah. what, how big of a tree and how wonderful of a tree it might evolve into mm-hmm. in, in a few years, right? So uh, carry on, cream. That's fantastic. You know, I, I believe in the same thing. Is I think it's probably been a good twenty years since I carried on anything. So I always go two piece. One is you know the the largest size that they'll allow you to, to carry yeah. on in that yes. stroller. You know, yeah. and then of course my my laptop bag or whatever is on top of that. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, while we're on here, while we're on yes. here, um, maybe give us a, a quick kind of uh, tour of the site in terms of the what might people find on here. I see some resources here. I see. Uh, tell us a bit about the site, uh, Mary. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, if you go into the the, the blog, uh, mm-hmm. uh, the the, uh, the blog tab there, what you'll see is a series of, of content. Uh, it's content creation mm-hmm. where uh, it's you know it's featured you know things around trips, various things that I've. Uh, uh, some of them have I've I've worked uh, with clients on. Some of them are just just you know just content that I think is cool, mm-hmm. and um, you know, sort of flushing it out. The the target audience for this is what I call the fun fit female, mm-hmm. uh, many in their fifties mm-hmm. who uh, you know travel with friends with family. Or, or solo and um, you know uh, travel light experience more is kind of the you know the approach right. and you can see the last couple of articles have kind of taken a bit of a kind of a blend uh, with the the pandemic there you know mm-hmm. looking at you know 2024 site for Whistler in the ski season yeah. so it's it's a travel tourism related piece but it's also taking a look at some of my marketing insights around that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so again that that one kind of blew up uh, with a number of different other blogs sharing it, uh, you know, just sort of questioning what, you know, Vale's marketing strategy and, and how it was going to play out with locals. So again, I've been able to kind of, kind of fall into a really interesting little uh, content tilt, so to speak, where it's, it's, it's travel related content, but I've been able to put my marketing lens to it uh, during the pandemic, which has uh, been quite, uh, quite an interesting angle to take. Fantastic. Now, uh... For folks, by the way, when you hear Mary says it, it kind of blew up, that's a good thing by today's uh, <laughs> lingo. I just learned that not too long ago, that, that that's actually a good thing. <laughs> it means that a lot of people went to the site <laughs> as a result of having some fairly prominent people in the media having shared the, the article. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's similar to this viral concept. Yes. You yes. Know? Yeah. Um, Wonderful. So, so folks, uh, if you go to again uh, carryonqueen.com, let me just uh, put the site right on to the screen here. Uh, so, so um, maybe uh, yeah. There's no us- dash, no dashes in there. Uh, it's just carryonqueen and then .com. Doing there's no there's no spaces or dashes. You bet. Uh, in yeah. the uh, yeah. website, I will uh, put it yeah. on here. Yeah. But uh, there it is. And uh, if you go there, there you go. That's okay. correct. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Um, so tell us, uh, 
maybe just give us another um, story or wrap up comment here before I leave this website here uh, and go to your other website. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, I've I've had some interesting uh, some interesting uh, experiences, uh, some mm -hmm. travel things. Uh, one of the ones, if we talk about go back to talking about adventure, uh, I combined a a fairly extensive trip around Australia and mm -hmm. uh, in learning to kite surf, I decided I wanted to go and learn to kite surf. And mm -hmm. it's a bit of a long story uh, how I ended up going uh, with one particular girlfriend, but um, suffice it to say, we met uh, at a mutual friend's party for Halloween and struck up a conversation. And anyway, about three or four months later, we ended up kite surfing together in Australia. But uh, I, I wrote an article around learning to kite surf and there's, there's always accompanying videos and, and things on there as well. Mm -hmm. And what's, um, you know, again, that one's really interesting because it's, it, it, that content is now getting kind of picking up and being shared. When I look at the analytics on it in Australia, there's a mm -hmm. number of people within the country because they can only travel within their own country. So there's, that's, that's one example of a piece. And, uh, but that was a trip that I combined work and pleasure. I was there also doing some, uh, some work. I had some, uh, some client contacts in Brisbane mm -hmm. that I was, uh, that I'd done some podcasts uh, with prior to that and I was also doing a, a, a presentation for Accenda School of Management and Educo Group. Mm -hmm. Actually it's through Educo Group and uh, which is associated with Southern Cross University uh, which was uh, part of my Melbourne leg of that trip mm -hmm. and then uh, um, also I was uh, being able to uh, it's just it, it was just it was just a, a, a like I said a mix of uh, fun and uh, work kind of thing, but I was able to pick up a, several pieces of content for Carry On Queen while I was there. Fantastic. Now, so when it comes to the five minute marketing, I love the name, you know, we have the idea of uh, yes. one minute manager, we have one minute, this five minute marketing. Tell us about uh, when you launched that, what was behind the, the idea, and I know it grew into something very uh, yeah. uh, big and, and, and robust, but uh, tell us the backstory as well. So five minute marketing has been around since 2008. Uh, it's it's a really good URL. And I probably, you know, there's no way I would have that URL if it wasn't mm -hmm. the fact that I had it registered in 2008. Uh, it, uh, it kind of came out of I, I had the brand kind of registered, but the real genesis of what to do with it uh, originated out of a conversation with Sam Horn. And uh, Sam is 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 a, a wonderful person. You uh, probably know her through NSA, yeah, Doom. Absolutely. And uh, she, you know, just just really kind of helped me kind of focus in on the brand and what to do with it. And at the same time, I was also writing the five minute marketing book. And what it was based on initially was I was I had I'd written a series of kind of regular articles for uh, business in Vancouver after completing my MBA. And I'd accumulated all this content and I realized that I, I love to write. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so the idea of sharing some of the, that advice, some of that content with clients and, you know, regular, regular folks through regular uh, weekly posts on five minute marketing was initially kind of what, what it was all about. And then over time, I sort of brought over my speaking stuff, my consulting, uh, you know, core, I've got, you know, online course there, uh, which is another kind of interesting thing that has been able to serve me during the pandemic, because I've been able to take that course and include it as part of the embedded kind of licensed material for some university course that I'm teaching as well. So it, it, it you know, it's, you, you reap what you sow. And so five minute marketing at, at its, at its genesis was about helping others and you know writing posts and articles with uh giving advice giving tips on marketing and anything that was new and and, and current that you could read in five minutes or less that that was the basic premise and i've kind of continued that i do a regular e-newsletter as well i have a, a I would call it loyal, almost to the point of fiercely loyal mm -hmm. uh, group of folks that subscribe to my five minute mm -hmm. marketing tips e-newsletter comes out every Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and that is always, it, again, it's the same notion, uh, uh, give, 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 serve, mm -hmm. remain top of mind. And it's uh, between the e-newsletter and the blog, it's probably the single biggest uh, generator of consulting and speaking business that I have. Yeah. 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 In other words, uh, it is almost like a, an entity on its own that happens to love you, the creator of yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes. Yeah. Uh, so tell us just uh, briefly uh, what people will find on here. Just take a quick uh, kind of perusal of it. Here. Well, it, it defaults on the first page to, to if you scroll down there uh, doing it, it defaults on the first page to displaying the most kind of current blog content. So you'll see, yeah. you know, I've got here in search of serendipity. That was a, a post around the absence of those kind of uh, accidental moments that we're mm -hmm. having right now during the pandemic and how those are the genesis of creativity and marketing. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. there was a bit of a, a post around that. Yep. If you kind of scroll a little bit further, you'll see some, you know, an example there. There's, you know, beating word of mouth worthy during mm -hmm. the pandemic, you know, how that has uh, changed. Quite, quite a, I would say, you know, since March, most of them have had, uh, you know, an angle to them around, you know, things that have changed and shifted during the pandemic. Uh, you know, Imagine our, that you are staying current. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> well, you know, I, I am fascinated right now about you know, the changes in behavior mm -hmm. uh, that are and, and the changes in habits that are happening right now. And there's so much shifting at the same time uh, that combined with fear and 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 in my fear that this this ingrained fear is going to remain longer term mm -hmm. and how that's going to respond in terms of changing consumer needs. I think it's going to be something that we're going to have to deal as marketers with for for the years to come. I think there's we're actually creating a generation that mm -hmm. uh, is going to be impacted by this. Maybe. So a lot of my writing is based around that. Mm -hmm. So that that's kind of the the blog uh, portion of it. And then if if you go up to you know there's yeah, the five market changes you, you you get the idea uh, mm -hmm. and I always post a video uh, that that's embedded within the blog post that yeah. is also also over on my YouTube channel. Um, but at the top, you'll see, Dune, there's also uh, a listing. If you just kind of scroll up to the top of the website again, mm -hmm. you'll see across uh, consulting, uh, speaking. Uh, there's uh, those are just you know, kind of uh, you can go into that. But it, you know, it, the speaking part sort of shows, uh, you know, where I, you know, the topics I speak on uh, kind of gives them an idea. Obviously, I'm doing uh, e, uh, e, pre e presentations, uh, you know doing them in digital form these days in, a, in addition to live at some point in the future, I'm hoping again, mm -hmm. but uh, very uh, comfortable with the e-presenter kind of format and kind of gives, gives clients the idea of some of the things of, around the topics that I, I speak on. And Wonderful. yeah. And um, yeah, you can just so, so, so tell books. Us, it's got the books there. Yeah. Oh, sorry, do, you have a do you have a story of a, a bit of a funny or surprising story where uh, relating to your five minute marketing kind of uh, blog or, or journey where where something happened that was uh, kind of interesting or funny or or out of the ordinary uh, mm -hmm. anything that comes to mind relates to that uh, five minute marketing and your viewers and your readers and gosh uh, it, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I had the the pleasure of having uh, Dan pointer uh, mm. as as a bit of an advisor on my book five minute yeah. marketing uh, initially the, the, the as, king as of books the king the of book king publishing. of self publishing and yeah. at the time when I was doing the book self publishing was you know that that was my first book five minute marketing and then word of mouth mouse and mobile was the second one but the first one was kind of at that 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 stage where self-publishing was still kind of new mm -hmm. and uh, Dan very, was very encouraging and, you know, advised me on a lot. He actually, I, I used his, the same editor that he uses uh, a gal who's actually from Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and so I, I don't know if that's, it's not really a story related to the blog, but it's a story related to the name of, mm. of the book and how that became such a strong part, uh, yeah. strong part of things. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, I'm going to uh, take us to um, kind of turn left here a little bit, get into some of the recreation activities. You have some videos that uh, I would <laughs> love to share. So tell me okay. which one you might want me to bring up first. Uh, I got I don't know if you have it uh, sort of. Uh, I can't remember, remember what, what I, I, can't I, remember I can what bring I up, sent you. <laughs> yeah, I can bring it up on screen if you want to kind of choose sure, the, sure. would that work? Yeah, okay. no, that would be fine, yeah. Okay. So it's if we want to go and, and do that, give me just a second here to sure. queue that up here. So uh, let's see here. I'm going to just go ahead and uh, bring in the screen here. And uh, I, I could yeah. just want to share share with folks is that uh, I, I, I'm usually a very, very organized person, but uh, <laughs> I somehow or another missed Dune's prompt to send some things to a Dropbox. And so I was like, the, I was like the kid who didn't do her homework last night. <laughs> 
<laughs> and uh, so I, I, I filled your Dropbox full of a bunch of videos. Some of, some of them are from Carry On Queen. Some of them are, I, I think there's a, I think I may have sent you our, our hockey one, our Stanley yeah. Cupcakes hockey. Yeah, let's have yeah. some fun. Let's have yeah. some fun here. Yeah, yeah. Sure. You go ahead, tell me which one to click play on. We'll, we'll enjoy uh, okay, some. well, um, I'll make let's it bigger. see here. I mean, if you want to, if you want to have some fun with the Stanley Cupcakes, uh, this is it's sort of it, it gives you a sense of who we are as a group of gals. Uh, there's there's the one I think it's the Stanley Cupcake hockey song. Yeah, let me so, just see. Yeah, we uh, we decided to kind of narrate the Stomp and Tom Connors Stanley Cup uh, st or uh, you know the hockey song, <laughs> and then did it to a bunch of photos. Uh, this one here, right? Yes. Yeah. It, okay. Yeah, you can you, you can play the beginning of you that. Or, yeah. uh, well, uh, let me know if you can hear this sound. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Suffice it to say, we're more than 40, 40 now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're called the Stanley Cupcakes. <laughs> but we kind of give you a hockey night. We started out two years ago with skating and skills on ice. From figure skates to Olympic race to winning a few games. And then the roars, cupcake scores, we all owe in our fame. I don't know how much you want to play, dude. Very cool. So, uh, yeah. how long? Uh, ha how long of a stint have you been with uh, this group here? Yeah, you know, we've been playing now for 10 years, Dan. Uh, wow. You can see some of those photos from early on where we are, we actually participated in the opening ceremonies of the Vancouver 2010 Winter Olympics, not as hockey players. <laughs> 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 um, I, I was part of one of the, the folks that did that skate around the mountain in those red suits with the flashing oh, red yes. lights. Yeah. Yeah, that's... And, uh, and some of the other gals were, I don't know, audience leaders, I think they called it. And, uh, uh -huh. And uh, so yeah, we but we we've been together as as a, as a group of uh, group of gals for ten years playing hockey, and yeah. uh, of course we've extended it well beyond hockey uh, in terms of friendship and travel. Several of the gals have become my some of my travel companions for the trips to Peru and Nicaragua, and and uh, it's it's gone much beyond the hockey rink. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. certainly we still do play. Although right now during the pandemic, it's no, we're not. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I have some photos of the Olympic uh, thing that I want to bring up here. Yeah. So, so while we're on it, why don't you expand on it a little bit? How did you get into the Olympics? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's kind of one of those 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 moments that that I, I can't wait till I'm like eighty or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. Back in that year when I was in the Olympics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what it was was uh, they they put out a call for uh, folks that wanted to help with with the opening ceremonies. And so our, our team went down as initially a bit of a lark, but it is kind of, you know, some fun. And then they were also looking for, you know, folks that were comfortable and it wasn't on ice skates, it was on rollerblades, so inline skates. And so that kind of cut out some of the other gals that weren't comfortable on that. And so um, myself and, a, and another, another one of the ladies uh, were the ones that participated in the actual skating part. Uh -huh. And so it was, uh, it was a great, I mean, Vancouver was uh, just, a, a crazy energy place to be in 2010. I think anybody who witnessed it on TV got a sense of the way the streets came to life every single night. And it was like probably the, the only two week time period in February in Vancouver when it didn't rain. Uh, mm. It rained the first two days and then it didn't rain after that. And so this was just kind of, I mean, this was, it was a, a real memorable life moment. And, mm. you know, to, to be part of, uh, you know, a live event uh, watched, you know, world round and, and in the amount of, uh, you know, practice that went into actually that, that two minutes of fame, um, if mm -hmm. you could call it that was, mm -hmm. uh, was, was pretty, you know, pretty remarkable. And, mm -hmm. um, but just to be part of it, right. It was, uh, it was uh, fabulous. 
Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And, we, and we just prayed that we didn't trip and fall and become part of a, a YouTube blooper the next morning. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, so there I am in all my glory. <laughs> Although that would make it even probably, that would probably go viral. <laughs> oh, well, for all the wrong reasons. This is not the way I want to be remembered, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And there's this more summery. <laughs> yeah. So this is, I mean, this is, this is a great example of, of that transition of kind of the hockey gals into, into other parts of, of your life. And so uh, Michelle and, and Lisa, a couple of the gals that I play hockey with, mm -hmm. we decided to make a trek uh, to do, uh, you know, to go to Peru and do uh, the trek to Machu Picchu. And so um, one gal is wearing a crown, as you may note, and uh, we called yeah. her the princess because this was perhaps a little bit out of her normal kind of comfort zone. Uh, uh -huh. Although she's a lot more hard nosed than she'd have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And, and this again, this became content for Carry On Queen. And so it becomes that, that extension of the other part of your life. And um, yeah. 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 Now we're going to play a game. Are you into games, Mary? Sure, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. You know what? What I, I I have to congratulate. You know, I I, I embrace the the kind of the unknown of this mm. experience, Dune, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm extremely comfortable with whatever happens happens, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we'll just weave it into a story. Yeah, wonderful. So the game that we're going to play, I just invented it just now. So I'm inventing it as we go here. Okay? Love it. Love so it. I game... feel like I feel like we're like in a jazz <laughs> section or something. <laughs> That's right. We're jamming. <laughs> so I'm going to roll on the uh, photos. Okay. And the photos are going to flash by in random order. Okay. And you're not going to talk to every photo. We'll get to that uh, later on. Okay. But as the photos drop by, you know, something will catch your eye and you'll talk about that. When you talk, I'm going to pause on that photo and back up and, and, and you'll talk on about that. Okay. So you want me to jump in or jump in, jump in. Okay, so sure. the okay. photos are going to just scroll by here yeah, yeah. And, and you will just pick a story that you want to tell us um, when okay. that story comes to you. Well, I, that one is this recently, this past summer uh, in Desolation Sound, uh, mm -hmm. I, we, we chartered a boat with uh, some folks. Uh, so a couple of, there was like, three couples and another fellow. And uh, we took advantage of the fact that the Americans couldn't get up to Canada. Mm -hmm. And so we picked up a charter, a 45 foot Bavaria mm -hmm. at the last minute in June. And so um, I was uh, one, of the, one of the skippers uh, for, for the cruise. So that's what that is. Skipper, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, was, so, it was a fun way to, my husband and I had uh, met sailing. We'd done a lot of sailing in the past and so, yeah. yeah. Oh my God, that's like, I, I, I way back to ski instructor days. <laughs> oh, you were a ski instructor. Well, that's I awesome. was, I was. How long of a stint was it? Uh, gosh, that's going back to my university days. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so you've always been active. You've always yes. been active. Yes, definitely. Yeah. That's. Have uh, you ever surfed in California? No, but uh, you just the the previous slide was in Nicaragua, and then that one that was just up there now, uh, mm -hmm. just uh, back there, was in Australia. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so what was the most exotic place you've been to? Oh my ever? God. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we have to go back to that one. Uh, the most exotic place. Uh -huh. uh, well, I mean, it depends on if you, if you want kind of like nice uh, and, and luxury exotic or, uh, you know, roughing it exotic. But I would say, I mean, Nicaragua was, was interesting in terms mm -hmm. of it was exotic. It was different. It was mm -hmm. challenging. Uh, right, we right. went there, it was a holiday, but we also did some community service while we were there, mm -hmm. which is uh, another uh, another piece that I think is important as part of your mm -hmm. travel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you said you want, was this the photo you were? Uh, well, no, there was the one with the, the, the crazy wedding dress. Well, this, this was in Peru. This is uh, yeah, hiking yeah. in Peru. There. Uh, this one. <laughs> so a girlfriend of mine, uh, Lisa Kershaw, another gal that I play hockey with, uh, decided to throw a party where everybody had to wear their wedding dress Mm -hmm. And you have to have recognized the fact that most of these gals have been, you know, this, their wedding was many, many years ago. <laughs> so, so we had a party with a bunch of girls that all came in their wedding dresses. And it was just a hoot to see who actually would fit in or who was duct taped in the back. And <laughs> <laughs> You know, anyway, it was funny. if I was, well... I don't know if that that was my group. I might yeah. have suggested. Okay, yeah. we'll take one photo like this, and yeah. we'll take another photo with yeah. the hockey sticks in uh -huh. hand. <laughs> well, I, I'm at the top there, the one with that crazy hat that uh, likely somebody sat on right before the photo because it looks a little. 
<laughs> a little sideways. It's yeah. uh, yeah. what is it? Horizontally biased. It is. It is. <laughs> uh, that's fun. Uh, uh, well, we'll come back to uh, yeah. some photos for yeah. sure. But what yeah. I'm going to do is just keep uh, cruising by here. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. so, so, you know, during your uh, presentation days yeah. before COVID, uh, yeah. you travel a lot for, for speaking and training, right? Right. right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you know, I've um, I, I I've I did quite a bit of work uh, locally in in Vancouver and Canada, but I've also also did some work down in the states, mm -hmm. and uh, just in the last you know several years, it really kind of carried me uh, over to uh, you know over into uh, Australia and, and doing some work there as well. So tell um, me the craziest uh, travel story that you have experienced. <laughs> <laughs> the craziest. Oh my gosh! Yeah. You know what? I think it would have to be the uh, the tsunami warning mm. that we had in Nicaragua. the The siren went off in the middle of the night. Uh, it was during a thunderstorm, and we actually thought there was a tsunami. And they were announcing it. It was all in in Spanish. We could barely understand it, and we we basically had to run out of our little thatched huts and get to the you know to the area to gather and to get on buses. And then they they then they announced that. It had been a um, uh, a mistake that basically that the the um, uh, the lightning bolt had hit the the station, mm -hmm. but uh, but essentially, it, <laughs> yeah, that that was probably I would say the most terrifying. And then a couple days after that, because there had been so much rain, all the crabs kind of came up out of the ground, and it was like the night of Edward his scissorhands. It was <laughs> so, so I mean that whole trip, and then a girlfriend having a scorpion in her shoe. I mean it's I mean it sounds kind of crazy. We did have a fabulous time, but it was nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So uh, tell us about CAPS, you know, the Canadian yeah. Association of Professional Speakers, of which we are both members. And yes. uh, you've been quite involved in the national board and, and all those different initiatives as well. Tell us your uh, perspective on CAPS. So I, I was on the board of CAPS, the national board, and this is actually a photo, I think, from it's a couple of years, uh, years back. I, I served on the board for two years and almost a third year because uh, Suzanne Stevens kind of ramped me into it a little bit <laughs> earlier. <laughs> And uh, prior to that, had served on the local board at our, our Vancouver chapter level. I got involved in chaps. Uh, chaps. <laughs> I got involved in caps. Uh, that's a blend of chapter and caps. <laughs> um, I got involved in caps in two thousand and eight, I believe, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, right at, at the edge of when you know the the, the Great Recession, and um, that's sort of when my my speaking career kind of kind of started off. And early on, I got some great advice from folks like David Guthrie, uh, I'm just trying to think who else. Uh, but you know, they they essentially said two things: get involved at the, you know, kind of the governance level, get involved in terms of the board, and make sure you go to the the, the annual convention. And so those are the two things that I've, I've made practice of doing. And uh, when I was on the national board, I, I helped with the marketing, the certain sort of the marketing chair. And it not only enabled me to give back to the association in a way that I felt that I was well equipped to do, but it also enabled me to have, you know, kind of those make those, you know, nurture those connections with mm -hmm. folks that are at that level. And um, along, along the way with that, then I was, uh, encouraged you know to uh to do my csp actually i think i did it before i was on the board but it was it was all kind of part of that 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 same time that period journey, yeah. and then then really got tapped into some of the folks in nsa in 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 the us mm -hmm. and i've maintained those friendships as well and so it really was a way to open the door and but certainly caps is such a giving community mm -hmm. uh i've i have gained far more, um, you know, and, and, and as a result have given far more to others. And it's, uh, it's, it's very much a nurturing, a nurturing community that way uh, we've yeah. learned from each other. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to, to meet again, all of our friends online, even though we do it in our, our happy hours, uh, you know, to, to share and see how people have adjusted their businesses during this time period, because it's, it's, it's been challenging. I'm sure some are flourishing and I'm sure some are really, you know, kind of having a tough time. Mm -hmm. And I know, um, when you said 2008 was when you joined CAPS, that was the year that um, CAPS convention was in Calgary that year. Mm. I think. You know, I think I, I, I'm trying to remember <laughs> I, that my first co convention was Toronto. And so mm. which was mm. that 2000? Uh, maybe I've got my years mixed yeah. up. 
No, yeah, doesn't matter. To, um, I was just commenting that, uh, you know, so that 2008 yeah, would be okay, about yeah. two years before I joined. Yeah. I joined okay. in 2010. Yeah. So yeah. I just remember that at the time, somebody at the stage said, you know, the recession, I'm choosing not to participate. And I thought, yeah, yeah. yeah that's not going to work out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That sounds like 2008. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so uh, wonderful. Now, when you think about marketing, uh, if somebody who is uh, a little bit, um, uh, say, I'm going to call it marketing for dummy, if I can use mm -hmm. that phrase. Uh, if there's somebody who doesn't know a lot about marketing wisdom, what would be the the, the top three things that you might tell them that might uh, kind of start to uh, put them on the right path when it comes to marketing? Any uh, insights or any sort of um, uh, even perspectives that you sure. would want them to embrace? Well, I mean, I think at, at, at its core, it's all about understanding who is your target audience, mm -hmm. who are you speaking to, who do you serve, mm -hmm. and also understanding at, at the core, what is your unique solid proposition? What do you do that your competitors don't, that your target market cares about that's not easily copied? Those mm -hmm. two things will help define where everything else gets built out. Mm -hmm. I think right now, though, with marketing, there's there's so many things shifting and changing and I really think to be a good marketer right now, you need to be human. You need to be authentic. Mm -hmm. You need to create kind of uh, communities or, or actually allow customers to create communities and then you serve them and kind of come alongside. Mm -hmm. I, I really think uh, there's it's you want to plug into that word of mouth, the, the mm -hmm. powerful word of mouth, because, you know, right now, you know, two thirds of your marketing is being done by somebody other than you. And mm -hmm. it's being done through social media. It's being done through earned media, through mm -hmm. word of mouth, rating sites. You know, it's um, you need to be good and then let others talk about you. And I think it, it really that's kind of uh, essentially been at the core of, of a lot of my message through five minute marketing was was to serve a community, know who my target audience is and to give, give, give. And mm -hmm. so I think, you know, right now. That whole that whole thing of being human, being um, you know, being where your customers are, understanding you know right now you know what changes have happened, and what are they struggling with, and I think you know there's so many things. I, I did I did some research uh, just informally through my LinkedIn group, my e newsletter group. It was back kind of in in June, and I asked them about their changed behaviors, and I think I just I'm just going to refer to a, a, a note here, but I think it was 73 percent had said that they had changed their product suppliers or services with somebody that they were previously loyal to, and that I, I found shocking. Mm -hmm. But even more shocking was that 65 percent said that they, if they were pleased, they planned to stay mm -hmm. uh, with that in the future, and that shows you the degree of volatility which is happening right now. And so the, the businesses that tap into the unserved or underserved mm -hmm. needs right now and do it in a genuine, authentic way with empathy, mm -hmm. uh, I think are the ones that are going to flourish. And, you know, as I said, at the, co at the core of that is understanding who your target audience is. And it may well have changed. Also, you know, what you do in terms of being unique may need to alter slightly as well, or change dramatically, uh, simply because the, our needs have changed, and a lot of them aren't going back. Yeah, yeah. So what I what I heard, I, I, if I had to summarize that, I would say, uh, <laughs> you know, during this uh, unprecedented time, we have to just uh, use the technology, but use the technology to allow you to be more human. Yes, definitely. Don't use the yeah. technology to then come across as technologist to come across as robotic to come across as scripted uh, yeah we need to use technology particularly now more than ever to be plugging into various things with uh, covid and, and virtual and all that stuff but 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 use it in a very human way right, as right. much as you can keep it simple like that you know dune it, it's one of the reasons why when i was going through some of the the photos to share with you last night mm -hmm. one of the reasons why i i decided to take I don't know. I know some of your other guests have taken this very much in a kind of a work only kind mm -hmm. of kind of focus. And mm -hmm. um, obviously, I wanted to touch on that. But I also wanted to flush out kind of the backstory mm -hmm. of, you know, of, of, you know, the things that I do outside of work, because mm -hmm. I think that's, uh, you know, we, we buy from people that we, you know, we know, like and trust. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we know that, but we buy from people that we can sort of feel that we know 
you know, on a, on a, on a deeper level. And it's one of the things that I've always, always done in my e-newsletter. I always share just a little bit about kind of what I'm doing or my family or, or there's something that's going on in mm -hmm. the background. And it's one of the ways that I, I nurture uh, that relationship. And so I do think that, you know, approaching this as uh, an opportunity to not just kind of position and pitch and tell what it is that I do in terms of my marketing, but to flush out the whole picture of, mm -hmm. of who Mary is and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as, as that, that authentic person. So, you bet. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have always believed that we are better when we bring more of ourselves um, to work mm -hmm. and more of ourselves home. Uh, wherever you go, bring your whole self is what I always say. And the idea, though, is uh, what we do at work ideally should uh, really help us be a better person at home and vice versa. Mm -hmm and vice Definitely. versa. This whole compartmentalized. Now, some people will tell me, but but you get in trouble. I said, I say, you know, okay, if you go too far and ha have no not, nothing kind of no temper on, on it at all, then then you might bump into it. But but most people don't err on that side. Most people err on the side of uh, bringing only part of themselves to the office mm. or to work, right? Right. Well, of course, now we're kind of working out of a home <laughs> office. Well, I, it, it, some of us were, have always been working out of a home office, but you know that now more than ever, that line has blurred. Yeah, you yeah. bet, you yeah. bet. Yeah. So, how are you uh, enjoying now? How long have you been in in uh, sort of beautiful British Columbia? How, how long was it that you moved there? So, I, I came out in 1987, and okay, so, so a... yeah, at the time, as I said, I drove my. Uh, 1987 Monte Carlo, <laughs> mm, yeah. and um, and I and I, I stayed with some friends initially that I had met on a, as a student work exchange program in New Zealand, and uh, then stayed with them and then uh, found some employment uh, out here and then and then eventually stayed. But initially, I worked in the recreation sector, mm. and, uh, but then got into media because it found that that was really more of my true calling, mm. and then uh, and somewhere along the line did an MBA to kind of you know, kind of get rid of the imposter syndrome and, uh, and, and realize that I actually knew what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I did mine as well and you never regret it, do you? No, no. no. It's, you know, I, I love I love learning. Uh, and, and I have to credit the MBA as, as what really launched me into a, a path of writing. And it was, it was you know, you, you kind of got back into that, you know, crafting your ideas, forming an opinion. And, um, and that's really, it's, that's something I continued after having done the MBA. And so obviously the content was, was, was fabulous, the connections, the people, but it was actually that habit of developing thought leadership mm -hmm. that emerged from that. You bet, you bet. Uh, so, so if somebody- There's would... the Monte Carlo right there <laughs> <laughs> on the BC border. Look at that. Uh, yeah, look she... at that. And my skis are on the roof. Look at that. <laughs> this could be this could be a photo of some rock star or country music star somewhere on one of those videos. It looks like an album cover or something, right? <laughs> yeah, I like it. I love it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, are they Vespa or some other brands? But uh, you know, every time I th see these, I think Vespa. But that's yeah. just a brand, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But uh, yeah. love it. Yeah. Uh, so so yeah. tell us that uh, if somebody was. Um, Considering to take, let's say, an MBA, a master, uh, master of Business uh, Administration, uh, and on the fence, on the fence, not sure if they should, uh, and uh, let's say you 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 think that it would be helpful for them, what might you say to them that might um, push them over the edge and then actually commit to taking an MBA? Well, I think they have to take a stock of where they are in their work life and their home life. Mm -hmm. um, with their work life, is it going to be something that's going to be supported? And also, is it something that they can, you know, kind of devote the time and are at the stage in their career where this is going to kind of add? Um, I, I, I believe that uh, an MBA should be something that you embark after you've had some work experience under your belt so that you can yeah. apply that to it. The other piece is where does it fit? Uh, you know, in your home life, because uh, it will take away quite a bit of time. Mm -hmm. And also, do you have the support in your home life to do that? But beyond that, I, I think really what it uh, it's, you're buying knowledge, but you're also buying connections. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, and now, you know, the, the options, uh, you know, as we come in out of COVID, I mean, this, this has dramatically changed the way education is going to be delivered. Mm -hmm. uh, schools have been forced online. Mm -hmm. And that is not going to go back. Now, I mean, obviously, they'll go back to face to face learning, but there's going to be lots of things that will change and be just fabulous opportunities in terms of hybrid, 
you know, go online here, go face to face there. And I think that's going to likely in the end be a, a better format for education for a lot of at least working adults. Mm -hmm. yeah. You bet. I mean, we have more I, options. I, I, I love this photo. This is the Lake Louise photo. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about it. Tell us more about it. Well, this was this was actually just last, actually not last February because that would be, that would be two Februarys ago. Mm -hmm. I, I was there attending a conference in uh, in um, uh, Calgary. Was it Calgary? Yeah, it was just actually no, it was in it was in Banff, mm -hmm. and um, I flew into Calgary. Uh, it was in Banff, and then uh, after the conference and uh, you know meeting with some clients, I I rented a car and I deked over to Lake Louise because I had this I had this romantic notion of ice skating on Lake Louise, and so <laughs> I got there literally as the sun was setting, and I had taken my my hockey jersey, and I just thought I just I just you know, so I skated and I, and I got this iconic photo. And, and this was a, a photo which I it was part of an article that was in the Vancouver Sun about skating on Lake Louise. And it was also a contributed piece to Travel Awaits, uh, which is another uh, publication web um, a site that I write for on, on a paid basis out of the United States. But it was just like one of those Canadian iconic moments, right? Mm. I'm on Lake Louise, I'm skating and I'm wearing a hockey jersey. Yeah. with my name on it because <laughs> awesome. i play for the team right like it was yeah, yeah it's uh yeah it's fantastic great, great memories fantastic 19 yeah oh this paul is your uh, paul henderson's number that that's very deliberate uh, is it yeah okay. 1972 i mean i'm i'm an old-time hockey fan and uh oh, yeah? yeah paul henderson scored the goal in 72 19 has been my number oh yeah. I, yeah. I was gonna yeah. ask you yeah. know when when that photo came up my first question was like you know uh is there any significance to number 19 how yeah. did you come to 19 yeah. but i thought the team might have uh, just assigned it to you well no. actually i i came in a bit late and there were only so many numbers <laughs> left but when i saw 19 i thought that's mine <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. So. Awesome. So, so uh, I was going to uh, uh, let's play another video. Sure. Uh, uh, I'm going to bring it up, and uh, you can tell me which video to kind of uh, uh, pull up here. So let me uh, just uh, cue that up. While uh, sure. you know what, while I'm queuing that up, why don't you tell us a little bit more about? Um, the whole, um, if somebody wants to go, you know, speak professionally, if they, they, they want to say, you know, I've been speaking, I, perhaps I might have joined Toastmasters, perhaps I might have speaking, uh, spoken for free and, and whatever have you, uh, and they are considering kind of the journey to become a professional speaker. What are two or three things you might share with them uh, that well, might help them consider it? Thanks, Dune. Um, you know, certainly the Toastmasters is a great place to start. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a, that's where I got my start. And mm -hmm. uh, you learn not only about speaking, but also about how to organize a meeting, how to deliver feedback. There's so many other skill sets that you learn in Toastmasters. But I, I joined uh, CAPS and... Um, and I think as a speaker, uh, you know, having some role models to aspire to. And so I know initially I, I attended a, a CAPS meeting. It was with, I think it was Elaine Allison, Cheryl Cram, mm -hmm. um, uh, Linda Edgecombe, I think were some of the, and there were female speakers. And mm -hmm. it sort of gave me permission to kind of think, oh, you can make a living at this. And here's, <laughs> here, and here's women who are doing it. And, and so I think, you know, for folks who are starting out, I think, you know, getting grounding at Toastmasters is a great place to start. Mm -hmm. And then so, sort of, you know, uh, you know, doing, you know, some of the, you know, the initial, the free gigs, you know, speaking for audiences that uh, need your, your message mm -hmm. and finding a way to kind of get your, get the word out on what it is that you do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, starting that way and then sort of slowly working yourself into, you know, you know, coming to, you know, some some meetings. And I know that CAPS has some terrific online programs that help support speakers. You know, our, our, the Speaking Academy, I think, is fabulous. Mm -hmm. uh, the materials that they've put together for uh, aspiring speakers. And, you know, so learning from that, coming to you know conventions, you know. Uh, learning for others who are, are in the industry, mm -hmm. but also recognizing that there's different kinds of speakers. And especially, and I think the COVID will even drive this home even more in that, you know, it used to be, you thought that there's, there's the keynoter, right. And there's, and there's the rock star and there's the keynoter and that's all there is. And there, there, there's always been more than that, but I think this is really showing us how that has unfolded. You know, there's the workshop leader, there's the, you know, the, uh, the facilitator, there is the, the person who is, is, is comfortable in a, in a teaching role. There's, you know, in, in this environment with online has opened up a 
whole lot more of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so getting experience with that. And then once things open up again, you know, uh, understanding how to, you know, to get in front of an audience and, uh, you know, and, and just everything else that goes around with it too. having product, having, you know, whether it be a book, whether it be, you know, building your website so that you start to build an audience and e-newsletter kind of email list. It's all of that stuff that starts to go into then the marketing of your business and your speaking. But ultimately, unless you've got something to say and you know how to craft a story around it, um, you know, don't market until you know that. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I love to uh, play this clip here. Tell me a little bit, tell us a little bit more about it before I hit play here, Mary. And I'm not sure if this is the the one on marketing fail. Future shop story. Oh, okay, so this was, yeah, there's there's been a couple of. Uh, oh, you've been, been on so many uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I network think, news that it's hard to know which one is which, I, right? I, I, I think this was just uh, commenting on the changing face of retail and <clears throat> and how when you know future shop closed and Best Buy, you know the the challenges that we're facing with. Uh, you know, big box retail, and and even now more so, we're going to see a lot a lot of changes in the next one to two years, because there's been such an impact with uh, online selling and Amazon and you know Shopify and uh, you know uh, we're going to see new competitors and we're going to see big ones falter. And so this was a, a clip from uh, you know from back when uh, Future Shop was uh, was going down. I'm not sure. I don't hear the volume on that, dude. Do you hear that? Good evening, I'm Dan Burrett. Another major retailer in Canada is closing many of its stores. Future Shop is shutting down or converting hundreds of locations. 1,500 people are going to be out of work, and some found out when they showed up this morning. And many customers say they were left in the dark. Jeff Harrington has our top story. I'm really upset, honestly. Wanda Farmer says she and her husband were at this Future Shop location on Granville just last night. They were looking to buy a fridge. The salesperson told them to sleep on it and come back tomorrow. They did. The windows covered up and the store had closed. Even the employees didn't see it coming. Is there a number we can call? Effective immediately, 66 Future Shop stores have closed permanently, nine of those right here in B.C. Dozens more will be converted to Best Buy retail outlets. The switch has consumers looking for answers. We've got a stereo system and a new TV. Corey Medell says she has $5,000 worth of product in this store. She's not sure what happens next. I'm a business owner. I understand things happen. And I understand if you're going to terminate like this, this is, this is just part of the process. As a consumer, I just want to know that my stuff is okay. Best Buy says it will honor Future Shop gift cards, existing products. Super, super fast. Mary Charlson is a marketing strategist. She says the move makes business sense. Some Future Shop and Best Buy locations were only meters apart, even sharing the same parking lot like here at the Lansdowne Centre in Richmond. Add in the soon-to-be loss of Target at the same location, and the mall could feel the pinch. It's going to start to hurt some other retailers in that mall, too, because that, those are anchors, right? Those are the things that bring people in. In a written statement, Ron Wilson, the president and COO of Best Buy Canada, says... Any decisions that impact our people are never taken lightly. Our first priority is to support them through this change. Some 1,500 people will be out of work, including Kayla Whittefield, who won't be staying with the company. It's really unfortunate, but it's the way that the market's going. Like There's just not a lot of need for stores anymore because everything is online. It's the final chapter for a retailer that's been operating here for more than 30 years. The first future shop opened in Vancouver in 1982. Jeff Harrington, CBC News, Vancouver. You know, I think it, this, we're going to be seeing more of this type of thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's um, you know, certainly there, there'll be challenges as, as consumer behavior has changed. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, just pausing on that and, and just think about marketing. I think you mentioned earlier that marketing, along with everything else, needs to continue to evolve because uh, that this COVID and all things related to it, and, and not, only, not only that, but but that trend was kind of coming anyway. 
and now it's just being accelerated hugely yeah. by COVID. So, so I think COVID accelerated a lot of things, whether it's work from home, we mm -hmm. probably were heading there slowly, but yes. probably surely, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the whole, uh, what is it? Uh, we got working from home, we got the whole uh, more online shopping, we were heading there, yeah. we were heading there, COVID just ushered it along. So there's a lot of things that, that COVID just uh, accelerated. Mm -hmm. And because we were heading there anyway, in the long run, in many of these areas, chances of us going back to where weight was uh, on March 9th is likely uh, not very big, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I think, and, you know, it's, you know, it's work, work from home, the online, the, it, especially is, is this, this, this notion of fear continues mm. to, to, to kind of plague consumers. And um, I don't know if you, you know the work of uh, Martin Lindstrom at all, but he's, um, mm. he's a, he's a fabulous guy. I follow a lot of uh, what he writes about and, um, and and he's got this whole notion of how fear will remain longer term, and so he kind of equates it to, you know, around you know post World War II kind of you know, uh, you know or sorry um, you know, the Depression, right? And then kind mm -hmm. of come uh, when it came into the uh, World War II, how there was that whole kind of generation that was programmed around fear, around mm -hmm. you know, will I have money? Will I have food? Will I have? And so and we saw that stay with them their entire life. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you have grandparents that, you know, coupon clipped and you know, save money and wouldn't, wouldn't borrow and leverage. And so he, he sort of, you know, and, and, and I tend to, I, I very much agree with him is that this, this uh, fear may be kind of rewiring mm -hmm. us as consumers, in particular, a generation of, of, of young people who have never really known a, a world outside of their devices. And so they're spending more time and, and the fear is being reinforced with the news, uh, mm -hmm. which is, which is, uh, you know, just kind of keeps on delivering, you know, you know, bad, bad, bad all the time. And, and so, um, I mean, I can go down a rabbit hole of algorithms on, on, on social media and why that's, why that's so and why it's wrong. But, um, you know, I think um, there's so much change happening right now in terms of consumer habits. You know, we talked about, you know, the working from home, the shopping online, uh, the, you know, the self-improvement focus, you know, people are, you know, you know, looking inward, you know, uh, you know, what do I value? What do I want to get maintain after this pandemic is over? You know, the whole do it yourself culture, you know, the gardening, you know, all that stuff, home improvement uh, was in there, you know, economic savings are up. There's, there's so many kind of kind of things that are percolating up. And as you said, it, it was the pandemic just accelerated it. Mm -hmm. It really didn't, you know, it's in, in some ways, we're, we're kind of on this curve where, you know, stuff that should have happened five years from now, it has already happened. Mm -hmm. And the laggards that are usually at the end of that curve, kind of coming on board, got mm -hmm. pushed into the early majority. <laughs> yeah. right? the, the ones that are now on Zoom that would have been the late majority, the last ones to kind of go, okay, I'll learn Zoom, had to. Mm -hmm. And so, so there's been so much change that, um, you know, that's, that's I, I mean, I find, I find, I find, you know, it's, it's certainly, it's, it's threatening for a lot of businesses, but I also find it incredibly hopeful mm -hmm. because I see opportunity for those that, that find the niches of what our consumer needs mm -hmm. uh, and, and how to fulfill it. A great example would be, you know, as if we've seen uh, kids going online, you know, uh, parents of, of elementary school kids going, uh, having to, you know, to help kind of coach the kids in online learning. Mm -hmm. What a great opportunity for, you know, uh, tutors and, 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 you know, maybe new, new grad mm -hmm. teachers and educators to kind of uh, form a business that supports, you mm -hmm. know, kids learning. So that the parents aren't forced into being teachers. Um, you know, there's, there's other, I mean, there's, you know, two offices, two, most houses aren't built, maybe built with one home office, but not two. And mm -hmm. so now you've got two spouses that are working in a home office, you know, somebody who, who builds, you know, who, 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 builds packages that can help you convert things into a, a home office or maybe even like a little cabin that you, you know, it arrives like the, you know, the home office in a box in the back of your yard. You know, I, I, I just, I, I look at it and I see opportunity for unfulfilled needs. Yeah. I do as well. Yeah. I do as well. I am a firm believer in the idea that uh, when major events happen, however painful, mm. what I know for sure is that it changed reality. Yes. Now, when reality changed, that means two things. Things that used to be easy may be harder now. Mm. Things that used to be hard may be easy now. 
things it, yeah. right things that yeah. may be impossible now is very possible things yeah. used to be not the things that people would think about or want or need now is a major need right i mean uh, what's the priority of the internet over the last um, you know they have memes about this where they talk about you know pre covid you know uh, certain things were higher priority internet was very low priority on many many people's yeah. uh, right. uh, list right and all of a sudden with covid and all this stuff here internet speed it is a very important yeah. thing that most yeah. people think about so yeah. that's just one example but the idea is uh, as you mentioned there's all kinds of opportunities now now uh, as we to think about opportunity I, I want to maybe pause on some photos of your family here and sure. as you witness some of your uh, children who are grown get grown out out now yeah. but they probably perhaps see the world a little bit different than maybe you or I uh, maybe that they see some opportunity that we don't see and uh, so let, let's just kind of look at that uh, a little bit here i'm just going to bring that in tell us about the, these uh, good looking people well actually that's my husband <laughs> <laughs> well he's good looking yeah he's good uh, looking. yeah that's that's that, 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 that was in hawaii at the top of uh mount was it mount loa the, the one on on the big island yeah um, that that, yeah. that famous yeah. uh, yes. you know right yeah. where yeah. if you would see some science movie yeah. uh you know uh, for whatever that, reason, there's this movie uh, that came uh, to mind. What uh, where, where they play that song is the end of the world as we know it. And, yeah, uh, well, and then they, they pan to that. Yeah, you feel like you are on the on the moon <laughs> up on top of that place. And so we, I, 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 in my carry on, no, uh -huh. I carried those mitts all the way to Hawaii <laughs> 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 to be able to wear at the top of the mountain. And I have to I have to say, you needed them. It was, uh, you know, that morning. I think we were in the ocean, and and then that evening we were up there in a, uh, you know, minus. Two degrees. Yeah, one time I was, my wife and I was in uh, Hawaii, and we often go to Honolulu. But but one time we were in uh, the Big Island, and when we drove up 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 to the mountain there, yeah. yes. uh, the weather changed so much that oh. at the bottom we were like yeah. in shorts. At the yeah. top we were like, okay, where's my coat? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's my daughter Pat, and uh, yeah, she's a uh, she's a uh, in uh, second year at UVic right now, but she's uh, mm. uh, an aspiring, I'd say, musician, singer songwriter. And yeah, so this is from I've, the performance. I've seen and heard some of her performances that you shared on social media. Mm. She's quite good with uh, with her craft there as well. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's yet to be seen whether it becomes a just a uh, a hobby or something more. So we'll see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this was, I think, that's at, at some event. And somebody, um, uh, this fellow, he was a really cool guy. He, he was he was always you know, uh, he was doing one nice thing, a uh, uh, kind of random act of kindness. Mm. Uh, uh, every day, and uh, and he happened to be one of the first guys to buy my book at the event. So that is AJ. AJ, I know him. <laughs> oh, oh, do okay. There we go. <laughs> yeah, hey, I, try, AJ. I was trying to remember. Yeah, because he yeah. was doing a random act of kindness. That was his yeah. whole thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. if I had to guess, just because it's AJ and you there, yeah. I'm yeah. guessing this might have been in Vancouver, maybe. No, oh, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't, honestly, I cannot remember. Uh, that's uh, that's my family. Uh, yeah. My husband, my two kids, uh, Alex and Pat. Very cool. Yeah. And uh, that's them some years prior to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very yeah. cool. Yeah. And uh, who's that? Gosh. <laughs> oh, no, that's uh, that's just some of my girlfriends. Uh, <laughs> at I, I think that just sort of it just goes to show you that the hockey team uh, goes beyond the ice. I think we are on our way to Vegas. Either, oh, wow. on, our, either on our way or already there. I'm not sure. Yeah. It looks like and, an airport. And did what happened in Vegas State in it, Las Vegas, or did you bring it home? <laughs> no, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, pirates! Uh, yeah, that's from our recent uh, our recent sailing trip, and so mm. we had uh, we decided to have pirate night, and mm. uh, and so that's uh, our 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 group. As you can see, pretty fun loving group. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to switch gear a little bit as we. Yeah. Uh, pan through some more photos sure. here uh, but the gear that i want to switch back to briefly is uh, when you think about uh, if somebody was to start a business tomorrow they say mm -hmm. you know what i i have some time i have some ideas i'm going to start a business with all of your experience with entrepreneurship and marketing and everything that 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 i know you are quite an expert at what might be one or two or three pieces of advice you might give somebody who is uh wanting to start their own business well, I would say first off is be very clear on who it is you're serving, who's your customer. Mm -hmm. And because everything else stems out of that, um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of Jane Atkinson would say, pick a lane, you know, pick know lane, who yeah. it is you serve and what it is that you do uniquely. The second thing I would say is when you're starting out in, especially in kind of, kind of the gig economy 
mm-hmm. kind of uh, approach is, you know, you'll hit some home runs, mm-hmm. but in between you need a stable income. And so one thing that I, it was some advice that I got early on was to find a couple of clients that you can work on a retainer basis. Mm-hmm. And so I went to them and I said, okay, here's kind of a, a package of things that I could do for you on a weekly basis. Here's yeah. roughly the number of hours that it would take. And then here's here's a fee. And, and this is something I knew that they needed. And so we agreed mm-hmm. on a fee and, mm-hmm. and a rough structure around it. And then I kind of kept track of it. But there'd be some months where they got way more value out of me than perhaps mm-hmm. the dollar figure and hours would have dictated. And some months it was maybe a little bit less. But what it gave me was combined a couple of clients that way. It gave me a base so that I could always be kind of kind of prospecting, selling into the future without worrying about what was happening in the current day. And so that enabled me to kind of, you know, not be panicking because everyone knows, you know, when you need the business, Mm -hmm. you're usually at least three months away from getting it. And so Mm -hmm. you could kind of play that game. And then over time really is, you know, as you develop, you know, what it is that you do and and who you do it for and, and understand that very well. And continue to deliver uh, through, you know, giving, uh, you know, as I said, with my e-newsletter, my blog, kind of giving tips, giving information, but mm-hmm. but helping your audience in some way. Then what kicks in is this system of referrals. And, mm. and, and that's kind of where you know you've kind of hit where you want to be is that you're not constantly prospecting. In fact, mm-hmm. you're, you're, you're just, you're dealing refer- with referrals. And then if you get too much in one time period, in terms of what you can deal with in time, you're referring that business to others in your network. Mm-hmm. And then that finds its way back to you in those, mm-hmm. those dips and hollows. So I would say yeah, those two things is get crystal clear on who you serve, what it is that you do. And then initially building mm-hmm. out kind of a retainer for yourself uh, until you get sort of more solid on your feet. Right, right, right. Uh, so just just a little bit of a twist on that. That's that's awesome advice. And uh, uh, if, what if somebody says, um, uh, I can't develop the retainer quite yet. Should I be taking a part time job while I kind of pursue this business uh, venture? And then kind of when it takes off to a certain point, then I would uh, uh, quit this part-time job. Sure. What's your you know, thoughts on that? You know, I, I think a lot of people do that, and there's mm-hmm. there's 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 no shame in doing that. In fact, mm-hmm. I think it's 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 smart in that you you're recognizing where your obligations are, and if you have mm-hmm. financial obligations, you know that that will be a way to do it. Some people jump in, you know, it, all in, right? And and for sure, then you can devote all your time and energy to it. Um, but that can be scary, right? You know, it's, uh, you know, yeah. you're basically, you're flying without a net and, yeah. um, you know, uh, it, it really depends on your comfort level with that. I know for yeah. myself, I, I liked having a bit of a net. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the easiest and the most comfortable would be you're still at home and your parents are still taking care of the, <laughs> the, the, the rent, the house and the food. You don't have to worry about that. Well, you start that, that this business. Be, yeah. That would yeah, be awesome. Yeah, you start yeah, this business, yeah. you have a vision, you pursue it, you pursue it. Uh, eventually, it goes to a point where you can move out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you want to move out. Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe you enjoy there, yeah. living there forever. But uh, yeah, so, you know, business, um, I would say that uh, at times like this, there's probably a bunch of people out there and there should be a whole bunch of people out there thinking, how could I start a new business venture? Because new needs are being uh, clarified uh, moment by moment. There are yes. needs that, uh, you know, we didn't even dream of that are being felt right absolutely you know i i do a, a monthly seminar for small business bc and mm-hmm. i've been doing that yeah you know, probably almost eight years mm-hmm. and i i see so i get to see all these these new ideas kind of coming out people who are you know they're <laughs> at the various stages of the entrepreneurship process right some of them are very early on some have got a website some have been in business for a couple of years and they're looking to kind of grow it mm-hmm. um, but i'm always blown away at the people who you know you know the ideas that kind of come in the door and mm-hmm. um you know but right now yes absolutely it, it, we're it's ripe for fulfilling you know niches you know things that have, have come up that others haven't and because there will be businesses that have been launched in this mm-hmm. time period that will that will grow and will kind of like will go like oh my god that was so obvious, mm-hmm. but you know it it was looking at uh, you know a new need, and looking at whether it be a uh, you know a new product a new service a new way to deliver something, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, 
it, right now, if I was to take a look at that at some, you know, and it's always trends, it's consumer needs and trends coming together. But if I was to look at that right now, I would say, well, we've got all this, you know, this, you know, uh, you're isolated, but and, and alone, right? So we're together, but we're alone. And, you know, all the, the things that have driven that around, you know, food, home service, delivery, all that kind of thing. But at the same time, in a very quick fashion, we've got things around recycling coming our way. And mm -hmm. so the whole, you know, we, you know plastic industry, you know, baby, you know, the disposable plastics for restaurant takeout, mm -hmm. those two things are going to collide big time. Mm -hmm. So there's, to me, there's, there's opportunity for someone to kind of come in there, whether, you know, you know with products that, that, that the restaurants or DoorDash or, you know, or, you know, skip mm -hmm. the dishes, you know, one of those companies is going to be the provider of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's just an example, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now I'm just looking at the photo here, and I, I just um, am admiring your medal that you're wearing. Tell us about the CSP oh. heavy, <laughs> heavy medal kind of. Uh, I'm gonna just bring it up on screen here. Okay. Yeah, reminisce a bit. So this was in 2016, and this was uh, down in uh, went down to Phoenix, mm -hmm. and uh, this was with Ruby. It was uh, it was uh, it was the NSA, uh, 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 I guess chapter or the the chair of NSA at the time. And uh, so this was uh, uh, receiving the CSP, the Certified Speaking Professional uh, designation. You know, I have to say, Dune, is that, you know, I, I don't go, I'm at, I'm at a stage in my life that I don't really need a whole bunch of gold stars on my <laughs> report card. Like I really don't. Um, but, you know, I kind of looked at the CSP and I thought, ah, you know what, this is something which is, is recognized by the industry. But more than anything, I think it also serves our community that the folks that that are are able and, and willing you know able to qualify and willing to go through the work of doing it are also helping their association by endorsing the fact that we have this certification process and so i embarked on on the on the process of putting together my records for five years of you know of serving clients and you know what was the billable and you know getting the client surveys and having the independent review yeah, and yeah. all of that stuff and so this was the culmination of that moment and uh, down in phoenix and um and it's really quite quite fabulous to go to an, an nsa conference because they make you wear the csp the whole conference <laughs> 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 and uh so but i mean in americans you know god love them right i mean just uh you know every person congratulates you and they make such a big deal of it you're getting off the elevator you're just going for a coffee or going for a pee and somebody's like oh my god you got your csp right and so but it was it was it was a celebration not just on the stage but it was a celebration of the entire event and this was the, the the class and you know there's 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 some pretty prominent folks in there you know jay Breyer was you know i mean jay Breyer should have had a csp years ago but you know um you know he's very well known you know in sort mm -hmm. of the customer service uh, uh, area and um so i was i i was very honored to be rubbing shoulders with a, a few pretty prominent folks uh, from nsa and representing canada proudly yeah, there you are in the back there, yep. if I'm yes. not mistaken. That's correct. Uh, yeah, now, uh, one year, uh, a few years ago, one year I was going to apply and I was going to book some time at the, uh, you know, over the Christmas uh, holidays there yes. to kind of do that. Because I know it's kind of due early in January, the application yes. and yeah. whatnot. Yeah. And, and some stuff happened where it took my attention away from it and I just didn't make it uh, kind of... Uh, uh, that timeline yeah. and then the next year i just had other things going and so it hasn't happened yet but uh yeah. certainly something to aspire to for sure it, it, it's a worthwhile process it's actually quite quite fun to to reflect back on mm -hmm. kind of what you've done too yeah, and, and yeah. realize that okay yeah i do qualify for this <laughs> and um, the other un i i hadn't really anticipated it benefit was the process of contacting because of course you're not going to ask these clients to kind of do a rating for you without actually contacting them initially and saying hey you remember two years ago when i did that blah 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 and so the process of actually going kind of combing back through your list of, of clients and the work that you have done actually kind of stirred up interesting conversations that then resulted in additional work at that at that time and that you could um, you know and and conversations around gee you know we're planning for next year's AGM you know uh, we're, we're looking for potential speakers you know and and so it was that kind of conversation so that and that I hadn't anticipated that side of it mm, so yeah. that's something to remember do absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, i will have to uh, kind of get back into that mode again here soon but uh, life uh, got in the way in terms of all the other stuff and uh, yeah. but uh, yeah uh, thank you for sharing that and uh, yeah 
as we uh, round the corner on wrapping up the the the, sure. uh, the conversation here, Mary, tell us were there topics that you wanted to share that we haven't gotten to yet? Uh, were there uh, you know kind of areas or insights that you want to share that we um, haven't gotten to yet? You know, I would just, I mean, I. I think I mean we we we've dipped into the whole idea around the way marketing is shifting right now, but I think it's it's worthy of understanding just how pivotal this moment is mm -hmm. uh, for marketers to get close to their customers in a world that seems to be lacking empathy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> And I know we're not going to get political, but in a world that seems to be lacking empathy, I think the, the there's a huge opportunity for brands right now, businesses, you know, to kind of to have that 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 empathetic and that you know to understand what's really going on with your customers, get close to them, right? And mm -hmm. because people are going to want to belong, mm -hmm. and and be be part of of kind of you know belong to a brand, belong to a story, want to kind of. Um, you know, because we've been isolated. And, right. and so there, there's going to be opportunity for, for companies that can kind of come alongside uh, in an empathetic way, you know, um, not so much that kind of go out there and create community groups, but understand that those groups have been formed and that you need to be part of that conversation, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and marketing is moving into those, those, those sort of, you know, less, less of kind of the public realm of kind of social media, Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, and a lot more into closed groups, mm -hmm. uh, direct messaging, WhatsApp groups, all those things. And you can't buy your way into those. Mm -hmm. You have to earn the right to be part of the conversation. And I think the only way that you can really do that is by being authentic, uh, helping customers, having empathy, uh, you know, giving them something to talk about. And, and maybe that really, it all does kind of come back to customer service and understanding who you're serving. And mm -hmm. I think that's marketing in the future. It's very, it's a very human approach to marketing. And uh, it's not about funnels. It's not about all that stuff. Um, yeah. I think, I think customers are going to crave that coming out of this. Yeah. You know, uh, what you Listening to what you said about the the smaller group and more uh, quote unquote private or close group and whatnot, just brought back really this idea of we're actually going back to the way it used to be when the world was not global. You know, you can just reach out and kind of message everybody in the world or whatever. It used to be that you were in a certain. Uh, local locations and whatnot and you had uh, participation and community and relationships and influence and understanding and empathy and all of that and that grows from there but now that the shift is that we can still do that and we need to do that but now the the, the makeup of those groups don't have to be based on locations they're based on interest and, and, and you know exactly right so you know long ago we used to have this thing called you remember the sig you know special interest group yes yes oh my I gosh right? i think it, i think in many ways we're coming back to that aren't we yeah yeah you know it's uh, i know mark schaefer um <laughs> and i was just i was just uh, uh in a uh, a group with him uh, the last, last last three days i was um so an invited group of uh, global global thought leaders in marketing, kind of a think tank. Mm -hmm. I called it the uprising event. It was online. And Mark Schaefer wrote um, The Marketing Rebellion, but he talks about the notion of customer islands mm. and the fact that we they're self-selected islands that we've mm. formed right. and that, you know, nobody arrives at the island and starts broadcasting <laughs> about themselves. It's almost like being in a small town. Like you, you arrive and then you kind of figure out how the island works and, and who's kind of who leads what. And I think if, if we treat customers with that kind of respect and mm. we come alongside them, mm. you know, Mm -hmm. Come up to them on the island, um, you know, and then and also and then recognize that they're they're communicating in these one to one formats, direct messaging. You know, um, they're texting. They're they're part of the WhatsApp group. They're part of a Facebook group. We have to be invited into that. That's the island, mm -hmm. and you know, and serve them well. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just looking at that photo. That one just back. Well, that's our cabin up no. uh, oh, Nelson oh, Island. But there was one back there was with Bobby Orr. Oh, oh gosh. wow! Let yeah. me go there. Yeah. <laughs> Right there. there. Yeah, that was, uh, my gosh, that's, uh, I, I knew I dropped a few oldies in there, but that's, I was a Bobby Orr fan. And that, so that wow. was at some charity baseball game in, in Perry Sound. And so I think my proud mother is the lady in the background as well. She was an, another uh, hockey fan. I know there's some photos <laughs> of myself with my mother in, in that, that gathering, but uh, yeah, that was, that, that's a Bobby Orr photo. Bobby Orr. Yeah, See, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. What, just, what year, what, what roughly what year would you oh, say? Gosh. Okay. 70, 60? I mean, 
that that to me looks like kind of mid seventies. Mm, I'm just cool. I'm going by my hair and I'm going by my height. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for pausing on that. Uh, I, if I may share a story that uh, basically uh, echo what you have said about the yeah. community and the island and all of that. Mm. Uh, the story is this: uh, back when I thought I was pretty good at uh, kind of uh, traveling all over North America and doing a bunch of um, Pretty effective sales with um, uh, a really good company there. And, and then what happened is I, I bought these um, cassette tapes. Remember those cassette tapes? Yes. The twelve cassette. Yep. It was at a garage sale, so it was like a yep. dollar for all I twelve. Had mixed tapes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I listened to all of them. I listened to, but there's only one one thing I remember, and it was the most valuable thing. And so it's not about quantity; it's always about how it impacted you. Right. And the quote that was from there was, um, I was just going ahead and quote it from that particular. I think it was like a, the counselor selling method or something like yeah. that. Uh, mm -hmm. So it says, people don't buy your products or services. I'm going to add or ideas. So yeah. it says, people don't buy your products or services necessarily because they fully understand it. Yeah. They buy your products or services because they believe that you understand them. Yes. And that quote just changed how I go about selling, how I go about uh, kind of influence, because really the idea is that you can't really influence anybody until they believe that you understand them. You can be so smart and so awesome, but they'll say, but you don't understand me. You don't understand my situation. You don't understand my pain. So so understanding is is the first step. Right? And, I, and I think that that's where it all comes back to that empathy. Right. Mm -hmm. that, what, what is the customer pain? Right. Yeah. What, and, and what is going on right now? You know, mm -hmm. there's a great example of and, and this and, and also then leveraging into word of mouth and uh, earned media, but understanding the customer pain. And I wrote about it in a blog post a couple a couple couple posts ago, but it was around Mount Buller in Victoria, Australia, a ski resort. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you read that one, Dune, but um, the, Mount Boulder, basically, uh, the ski resorts in Australia, uh, you know, Melbourne went into lockdown. And so, mm. you know, a lot of the, you know, the competing resorts, the ones owned by Vail had to shut down uh, after, mm -hmm. I think they were open for four days and then they wow. shut down. Mm -hmm. And so they're, you know, the, the people who bought uh, seasons passes, you know, they were kind of out, you know, kind of out of luck. And so they, they weren't giving refunds, they weren't doing anything. And so Mount Buller was kind of a locally owned mountain. And so in, in contrast to the way that Vail dealt with it, they decided to ask their members, um, you know, what kind of refund do you think you would like? Mm. So, and and they were at, they managed to stay open for, I think it was 40, a little over 40 days. Mm -hmm. And so they basically said, based on your experience and based on the number of days that you, you were able to ski uh, mm -hmm. for your pass, you tell us mm. how much refund, you know, do you, do you, do you need a hundred percent? We'll give it to you. Uh, maybe 50%, you know, you tell us what based on the value. And mm -hmm. so just by placing them, you know, themselves in the customer's shoes and mm -hmm. trust, I think that's mm -hmm. a huge piece of this equation was that they trusted their customers mm -hmm. enough as members, right? Not just yeah. customers. They were, we trust you as a member, you tell us. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you know, for sure, there'd be a few people that would take advantage of it. And, but, you know, there'd be others that would tow, kind of tow the way and help others along. And so I think the upshot of it was, is that it appeared that they were on the customer's side. Mm -hmm. They treated them with respect uh, versus their competitors who were still trying to figure out, you know, how to nickel and dime people for, <laughs> you know, how many days, how many hours, you know, like when did they buy their pass, you know, all this kind of stuff. And as a result, all of those people took the message and word of mouth, shared it out. You know, we know that content that's created by consumers is 600% more effective because mm. it's shared out on their own channels. Yeah. So whether it be, you know, they shared it digitally or through word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And they also got a lot of earned media, which is a mm -hmm. huge piece of this as well. So you had the newspapers, the radio stations, you had other people who were then further amplifying the message of goodwill for the customers. Right. And the businesses that understand how to harness that and to teach to treat their customers with respect are the ones that are really going to thrive in this kind of new world that we're finding ourselves in. Yeah, that reminds me of a story. Uh, let me tell you a brief story. So sure. there was a time in my life when um, uh, I, I bought a lot of musical instruments. I still have lots and lots and lots of it. But but there was a time when I, I bought some and I would sell some and I haven't sold any for a long time. But but anyway, when I was selling some stuff, I remember one person came over and, you know, I teach negotiation, so I know how to negotiate. But this person came over and, you know, part of the thing is we always ch chit chat a little bit, get to know a little bit about uh, whatever they want to share. So they were sharing some stuff. And, and after hearing a little bit about that and, uh, you know, whatever, it was like, 
he he said to me, um, you know, let's say it was listed, whatever, before I even offer anything, yeah. he says, well, I'll, I'll sell it to you for like uh, 30% less. Right. And I say, no, 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 I want to pay you full price. So that's right. a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what yeah. happened? Yeah. Had I not known him, had I not, you know, kind of understand where we're at, that conversation would not have happened. We would have right. kicked into the default negotiating kind of thing, yeah. which means the buyer wants to pay less, the seller wants to get more. Right. But but for whatever reason, you know, we were chatting, chatting and whatnot. What it was was, um, yeah, so so we were chatting. And then because I have that background, and then he went and said, well, you know, I, I, I'll give it to you for 30% less than the listed price. And there I was. I could not do that. I was like, no, I got to give you a full price. <laughs> I was like, so no, no, I said no. Full. So, so, you know, again, understanding is a big part of how we uh, uh, perceive things, right? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Now, the, uh, I'm going to challenge you to look at these videos or maybe think of a video. We're going to play one more video, sure. my friend. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, Mary, I don't know if you remember. I'm going to tell you the video okay. here. There's okay. a cupcake warm, warm up. There's the, uh, yeah. what is it, ice skating on uh, Lake Louise. Lake Louise. Yeah. There's yeah. the kite surfing. There's yeah. the Mary skiing. There's the, uh, 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 what is it, uh, surfing. Uh, okay. Yellowstone. Uh, and then there's the uh, Stanley Cupcake Hockey song, which we've seen. Okay. Oh yeah. gosh. Um, <laughs> I mean, you could you could go to uh, I don't know if we go to we go to kite surfing. We could go to um, oh, I don't know or, oh. or the ski. <laughs> the ski one. I mean, the, the the ski one is kind of fun too. That's uh, okay, down Chris, that's down Chris that, Mountain. I think it was a, I think it was uh, somebody is trailing me, and I was just uh, it was it was actually what's significant about this one is because it was it was uh, the end of February. And yeah. uh, then I was I was uh, away on on business, and then we were in Hawaii, and then and then everything closed down. So this is mm. this is probably my last ski run. <laughs> 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 Not sure. I'm hoping to get more in this winter, but uh, yeah, this was. Yeah. Uh, I think it was. Uh, yeah, just just uh, enjoying uh, a, a beautiful uh, a beautiful run down Grouse Mountain uh, overlooking Vancouver, which maybe that's that's kind of a nice way to kind of kind of end off because it it mm. really kind of shows that meshing of you know, work, work in the morning, go play in the afternoon and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, keep your life balanced. I've, I've got some friends that uh, would, would fully endorse that, I'm sure. But uh, this was an opportunity I think I had to spend with my son and my daughter on the mountains. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, there was another one that you said, perhaps. So I'm going to bring it in because these are short clips, my friend. Okay, these are sure. short clips. Uh, okay, we got time. Sure. We got okay, time. Okay. Uh, so um, um, you mentioned... Um, which one was it? Uh, well, maybe maybe the surfing in Australia. How about you go with that one? It's the yeah, one with yeah. the, wed the wedge, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, Let, that one's kind of fun. That one's kind of fun. Uh, surfing. Is, yeah, this yeah. is over in Perth. Uh, just it's a couple hours north of. Uh, oh, north I of love Perth. the music. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I don't hear the I don't hear the music though. Yep. Okay, give okay. me a second. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me uh, bring it back here. Sure. Uh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> Love it, love it. Yeah. So with the Carry On Queen uh, yeah. in particular, I suppose all of your travels 
could be business travel. <laughs> yeah, well, well, pretty much. Uh, I mean, I'm creating content for Carry On Queen, but the 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 interesting thing is that I've been able to combine not only the kind of the business of Carry On Queen for the travel, but usually I've been doing other kind of five minute marketing stuff uh, related to it as well. Certainly, the the Australia junket was uh, definitely a combination. That was a wild packing because I I had I had I had heels, I had I had stuff to be able to convert into a kind of a quasi briefcase with my laptop for my work work stuff. I had things for kite surfing. I had things for regular surfing. And I lived out of the suitcase for, uh, you know, well over a month. So it was, uh, it was uh, good fun. Wow. You know what? I, I really can't let you go without playing at least the uh, Lake, Lake Louise. <laughs> sure, scene, sure. You know? To be the, the, the Canadian girl. So this, yeah. <laughs> and it, it, done in a similar format and you'll see i've i've kind of uh you know i've kind of pulled these uh, each of these uh these clips uh, or each of the posts uh, typically have kind of something like this to kind of go with the content to make it fun so love it yeah. so mo a multimedia blog yes, yes. <laughs> oh we need the volume though oh, there we go okay Hi there, it's Mary Charlson here from carryonqueen.com and I'm here at the beautiful Lake Louise in Alberta and I'm here skating on the lake, which is absolutely fabulous. You can take a look at it over here to that iconic shot and I think about my hockey jersey on here, these Stanley Cupcakes and uh, just having a, having a blast doing the iconic Canadian thing on the lake. See you later. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. So of course the uh, the the American client kind of ate uh, ate ate that stuff up, of course, right? Because uh, you know skating on a lake for a lot of Americans is, uh, if they're in the southern states, is uh, quite quite a different experience. And so that was a uh, part of a, a video that accompanied uh, a post which I did with Travel Awaits. And uh, yeah. So so you know it it, it it's kind of interesting just the way I've been able to kind of kind of combine all this stuff with uh, with with the, the the two brands which right now it's kind of I'm running with them both dude <laughs> ah. well you but, know uh, in the long run the travel one has a lot of potential doesn't yeah, it it does it does and you know I I can I can feel myself certainly gravitating that way uh, yeah. and um, you know and and, and you know and, and, and applying you know applying the marketing to it but also knowing that this is something that kind of can kind of feed my soul uh, it's very in, much in a world. lifestyle thing yeah, very much a yeah. lifestyle thing a little bit more sort of basic human needs thing mm -hmm. like marketing is is awesome is is fantastic but is a bit more uh, business ish yeah, yeah. whereas uh, you know this is very much a lifestyle thing yeah, so yeah. as we uh, uh, i'm gonna play another one because i'm the host <laughs> because i'm the host i can <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm just gonna i i enjoy this thing so these are sure, short, sure. quick clips so let me just bring it in sure. uh, actually okay. that, that's not the one no, let me bring okay. this in here. yeah yeah there we go. Okay, the Montana. Sure. Mm, okay. Tell us about this. Tell us about this. So, well, this was I, I was actually down in uh, Montana for a travel bloggers conference and mm. uh, participating in that kind of you know kind of my whole new world of uh, travel blogging. And so, this was a clip I put together that kind of reflected on the whole road trip. Uh, so, I went into Yellowstone Park, uh, the Beartooth Mountain Highway, as as part of uh, the, the, this kind of promotional clip. Mm -hmm. And um, and this is actually I, I used this in a, a recent presentation for a client to do a whole kind of zoom we called it zoom around the world and it was one of uh one of the pieces of of that as well and so um I, as you've gathered i kind of i kind of get a kick out of kind of pulling all of the content together and obviously writing about it but it was very fun reflecting on 
the value of road trips these days and how mm -hmm. our mindset has changed around road trips. And so I framed the whole article around that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, local travel, right? Yeah. Obviously we, we can't get to Montana <laughs> right now, but um, so this, this was the video that kind of accompanied it. You bet. Cool. Let's stick it. Sure. Of course, I got a motorbike in there. <laughs> Beautiful. Never once did the distance start to rambling man. So I'll leave with my boot heels. Definitely meaning to rush our traffic. It's because there's a whole bunch of bison. Honey, I'm not the type of guy that believes in faith. But I'm also not the type to deny how well you're made. Since I like the way you move, I'm prepared to wait till you're ready to go. I'd give to have your hand on the way down the road. Alone I'm fine, but with you I've got all I need. And you can rest your lovely eyes because you found that. Looks like you are pretty pink and violet. And honey, I'm not the type of guy that believes in fate. But I'm also not the type to deny how well you're Since I love the way you All I'd get to have your hand on my way down the road. So from where I am, I can see where I need to be. Falls one road and I would love to have you walking with me. Cause honey, I'm not the type of guy that believes in fate. But I'm also not the type to deny how well you're made. Fantastic. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of fun. I, I must uh, maybe highlight for our viewers again the idea of uh, it's a great demonstration of something that I quite believe in, and that is you always want to work at your current career focus, uh, but always want to sow some seeds, as you say, sow some mm -hmm. seeds and and nurture it and let it grow, and in the long run, at some point, you will be pulled towards it mm -hmm. rather than having just one thing. And then uh, eventually feel like you got pushed out of it for some reason, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, it's back to the whole like, you know, uh, develop something that you might love yeah. long before you need to have yes. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, I, I think uh, Pat Katz, you know, said that very well and it, it really kind of struck home for me. And mm -hmm. it's, it, as I said, that was kind of the impetus for this initially mm -hmm. uh, to go play, go play in the space. And, uh, and it's been fabulous meeting all sorts of new people and industry players and writers and bloggers and, you know, association people for travel brands in the United States and Canada. And, um, you know, that's invigorated me. Uh, it's, it's sometimes it's kind of hard to spin both plates at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, whenever I work on the Carry On Queen brand, I smile. 
And of course, you know, and, and, and five minute marketing is, you know, it's, it, that has been my passion for my life. And uh, that's not about to change anytime soon, but uh, it's, it's delightful, as you said, to have something else to kind of, uh, you know, to, to destroy your soul. Hey, you know that house. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I haven't heard yeah. about that house. Is okay. that something you guys built, or? Yes, it is. That is our cabin up uh, the Sunshine Coast. We have a uh, we 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 sold a, a a family property back in uh, you know 2003 mm -hmm. uh, in Ontario, and then uh, my mom had moved out to the West Coast by that time as well. And so we we built uh, we bought the property, and then mm -hmm. we built the cabin ourselves. I should say we, the collective we. My husband built it. <laughs> he's not a builder, but he's very very handy that way. Yeah. And uh, I roofed it though because uh, he fell off the roof and broke his arm and that's a big long story but i roofed it with a buddy so i do have uh, skin in the game on this cabin for sure mm. yeah so that must yeah. be a yeah. a bit of a scary thing knowing that your husband fell off and and now you're taking his place yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. not a yeah. good way to start the yeah. job is like yeah absolutely <laughs> i'm replacing somebody yeah. who got hurt yeah. you know dude there, there's one thing we haven't talked about and i just it, it just just in 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 to, to, to give it full credit, and I know there was a photo that kind of scooted through. I don't know if you can find it quickly, but there is one of of uh, my myself with my mum at a at a hockey rink. Yeah, um, let me find it. Can you go back to that? Yeah, uh, and um, let me uh, just yeah. uh, tell me when uh, you see it. Hockey yeah. rink. Oh, there, there you go. Oh, right okay. Yeah. So, so this this was something, um, and I just I just want to kind of honor that as as a memory as well. Is that um, my mom passed away in 2017, but she was uh, sort of my you know lifelong inspiration for not only you know launching my 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 business, but also just for having a passion for 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 life and adventure. Mm -hmm. And so this was a, a photo which was taken as part of a photo spread for an article that I did in Zoomer magazine about. Mm. Uh, how hockey was in two generations of our family, but it was on the female side. And so, because <laughs> my mom had played as uh, in her youth and coach Fantastic. teams, and then I had played. They came to do this photo shoot, and she was well into her 80s in mm. this photo. And so, wow. um, this one just, it, it sort of, it warms my heart to see that one come up. So I just wanted to kind of flesh out the story around that. Well, it, it warms my heart as well. My mom is yeah. also in her 80s mm. uh, right now. And uh, certainly when you're in your 80s and, and you're able to enjoy this type of mm. outing and and still holding on to the yeah. hockey stick with passion and smile on your yeah. face, yeah. Uh, that is a, a wonderful. Well, wonderful. She, she was famous for having come into the dressing room once <laughs> and and coached the girls on a backhand shot. And, oh, yeah. uh, and she raised the puck up and almost took somebody out. <laughs> <laughs> but but we realized afterwards that she grabbed a, a left hand stick and she's right hand or right hand mm. and she was a left hand stick whatever mm. it was she had a curve to her advantage but man she just <laughs> it went flying poor poor Karen Spears uh, she had to duck <laughs> <laughs> wow anyway well, she, she she's legendary with the girls for having uh, for her for her backhand shot. I love photos, and so um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to surprise you by do, doing okay. this. I'm going to spin through the photos, okay. and, and the ones that we've already talked about, we we'll, we'll just, just sort of sure. enjoy. The sure. ones that we haven't talked about, okay. tell me to pause, and I'll pause, and I want to hear sure. from you, okay? okay. So okay. give me a second to uh, kind of make that happen here. Here we go. And we can comment along the way, but we're going to pause on photos. Uh, so. This is uh, being on a panel, I see. Yeah, business. I was uh, basically moderating a panel for business in Vancouver. And yeah. Some uh, some business entrepreneurs, thought leaders. I think yeah. this is a presentation at, I was the Peter Legg Foundation at uh, Douglas College. That's you haven't my... said too much about your son and uh, yeah. the extreme stuff that he does yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah, extreme guy. Uh, that was some longboarding stuff, um, you know, and he's... Uh, you know, he was he was the world junior champion uh, back a number of years ago, and so that was something that was very much part of his life, and still still very much part of his passion. Uh, yeah. But uh, you yeah. know, as he sort of figures out, uh, you know, his his more of his uh, career. Life. I assume you're a swimmer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do. I do swim. Okay. That was that was actually I was a beach shot from the the windsurfing, uh, the or sort of All the right. kite surfing in Australia. Yeah. 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 Now, I saw some uh, videos that you shared on Facebook of your son uh, doing stuff where, you know, as they were going around um, it, around the corners and leaning into it and, and pushing the hand against the pavement. Yeah. And yeah. I see sparks flying out between yeah. the hand and yeah. the pavement. Yeah. Clearly, he's got some protection there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. No, there. It's, it's actually a lot safer than it perhaps looks to the uninitiated. Uh, I, he could, you know, could stop faster than a, a cyclist or a car, to be honest. But, really? Um, at that level, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Just like anything else, right? Uh, people yeah. who are, you know, really, really good at it makes it look easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. we try it. <laughs> Find out it's not so easy. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some of those were those those images. By the way, me. folks, NSA stands for the National Speaker Association. It's the other NSA. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. yeah, some of those were that, that was it. CBC marketing fails. That was kind of an interesting kind of uh, yeah. interview. Yeah. yeah. And that was, um, gosh, that was Crave event. It was a women's, it was a panel. This is uh, one of our, our older, uh, yeah, I think we won that one. I think that, that looks like we won the cup that year. Now, did you ever yeah. get into curling or you got into hockey? And uh, just never... I, I, you know, I did back in Ontario. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did in, in university for sure. I, I tried curling. Well, actually, I didn't have a choice. I was, you know, in phys ed, they take you to yeah. curling rinks but way yeah. back when, right? And so I went to curling a few times and kind of learned a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. 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 So. Well, AJ is also a uh, a, a musician, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I just, I followed him for quite a number of years uh, uh -huh. and on, on Facebook with his yeah. uh, random acts of kindness. It was quite yeah. fun. That was a West End Business Association. There was a they did a keynote there. Mm -hmm. That was a an article on our team. Have you printed enlarged this so that you post it on a poster somewhere in your uh, wall? You know or? what I do? I have that one framed. That was that was a, <laughs> that was an iconic. One. I would be was, shocked if you. This had is that the, the the kite surfing. This is what I think it. Uh, you know, we finally made it up. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember growing up kite surfing. Uh, kites. Um, you know, kite flying occupied mm. a lot of my brain cells mm. back then. Mm. Now, this is heli skiing. This is up in Whistler, heli skiing with my husband on my 50th birthday. So you're going to heli helicopter? Yeah. Uh, well, we, we we went with the with the group and we had a spectacular spring day. So uh, cool. yeah, we're, we're both pretty keen skiers. Mm. That was with my daughter in Prague. Uh, to on a, on. Nice. And that's something I've been able to do with both of my that's kids. That's a big is... board. That's like a 10 foot board. Yes. <laughs> And wow. I think that was the feature. That was the art. Oh, that's your mom again. Hey? Yes, that was the let photo just... that was with the article in Zoomer. Yeah. Yeah. Let me yeah. just go back to that. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, there. You go. Yeah. That's that was awesome. the that was the, the 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 one page kind of the uh, the cover spread for it. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Let me keep it. Uh... Wow. So again, the idea is uh, make sure you take time for your recreational side mm -hmm. and, you know, lo and behold, some point your recreation may become your business mm -hmm. and before too long, they mix together and they become yeah. a lifestyle thing. Right. <laughs> yeah. And something I've even mentioned as you're sort of flashing through, there's a few photos of the kids with uh, with traveling, but in addition, obviously, to traveling with friends and, and husband and yeah. a lot independently for work, um, I've made a point of oh. uh, traveling with both of my kids. Uh, I got to pause on this here. book cover here. I, I see it, it be, behind, I think you have it behind there. Yeah. Uh, your, where you're, right? Yes, the product place, right. placement. Right here, product. right? Product placement, <laughs> word of mouth, mouse and mobile, and yeah. also five minute marketing. Yeah. There you go. Product yeah. placement uh, has go. not <laughs> has not gone out of style. We're still uh, okay yeah. to do that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, oh man, that's, that's a pretty cool, um, Mo mouth and uh, mouse yeah. and mobile. Very mouth, cool. no, it's a, it is a bit of mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it was uh, very cool. And um, but I think I was mentioning just the value of of having traveled with both of my my adult children uh, yeah. in their in their late teens, early twenties, uh, and um, and the value of 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 doing that with them and uh, encouraging them then you know to inspire a life of travel on their own. Yeah, I mean, as I listened to what you said earlier about your mom, the way your mom lived has sort of influenced and informed how you uh, participate in the community, how Absolutely. you take up sports and hockey and whatever. So we have influence over people uh, in ways that we can't imagine uh, fully, right? Absolutely, I, I would agree with that 100%. Too. It's our Caps friends. Yeah. <laughs> yes, our caps friends. There's the girls. <laughs> and I think that was a, a, a another event that I was uh, was keynoting at and uh, pitching my book. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. So, so I'm guessing that with as you mentioned before, with this thing called travel, and then there's this thing called virtual, mm -hmm. and there's this thing. Called, I'm guessing that there would be some convergence that you'll have to kind of uh, one day you'll probably come up with an idea of how to marry those two in such a way that it'll be very innovative, where mm -hmm. where you know travel in, in the virtual and hybrid, some really on site in person, some travel yeah. virtual. You're probably going to mix that into the next level with uh, what has happened here with uh, you know COVID and, and uh, technology. I can can definitely see that, and you know, and just I mean, there's the idea of documenting travel and sharing it back but then there's also the idea of 
documenting and pulling people in. And I, mm-hmm. I could, I could definitely see that. I mean, can you imagine that? Like you're yeah. somewhere and you're creating the content, but then you're, you're saying you're pulling people in for the experience and sharing it yeah. with them. And, and uh, yeah. yeah, in other words, the traveler can yeah. interact with people who are at home or wherever they are right. traveling, quote unquote, with them, mm-hmm. interacting with them, mm-hmm quote unquote, supporting them and vice versa. All of those things could actually be blended. Um, and and the, the better that the technology gets, the more uh, the more real it can be, the more fluid and seamless it can be, right? And my kids talk about the augmented reality yeah. and th- they mean augmented in a different way. Yeah. But this is a, another way of really augmenting that reality, right? Yeah, I think uh, what we're seeing now with platforms are really they're probably in their infancy, and we'll look we'll look back to this moment in time, and it will feel sort of like uh, MySpace, right? Yeah, yeah. well, it feels uh, like that know, first cellular yeah. phone, that first yeah. cellular it phone. Will, it will be that way, and so the you know the platforms that well, I mean, even this one, you know, what you're doing with uh, with the editing, uh, you know, in in stream on the fly. Um, I've seen some conference platforms. I was at Remo, I think is one that's kind of interesting. I know Zoom has announced how they're going to be integrating a number of different kind of apps within the platform. And also, uh, I believe in the the US, bringing in quite shortly a a way to get payment uh, through Zoom for events. I mean, that will be a game changer. Mm-hmm. And I don't know when that'll come to Canada, but I would hope it would be shortly after the U.S. Mm-hmm. So I think what we're experiencing now is very much in its infancy. And, yeah. you know, even, you know, a year from now will be, fun, you know, there'll be other crazy stuff we'll be able to do with this. And 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 I hope to be able to blend together, you know, mm-hmm. the, the because I've attended a number of, uh, you know, and also participated as, as a speaker in a number of online conferences, which have been exceptionally well done in terms of building community and building, mm-hmm. you know, through the breakouts, through the social activities, whether you, you go, wow, how do they do that? Well, they do. <laughs> and, you know, and to be able to do that, because there will be this point where we'll embrace being able to actually get back to a real live event and hug our mm. friends. And you know, I'm looking forward to that with our CAPS folks. But, you know, and but we're going to want both because now we've had a taste of this we've become yeah. i don't know about you but uh if you become more productive right i mean i can get so much more done without mm-hmm. having to kind of commute in between meetings and you know and do the small talk in you know yeah. somebody's office and yeah. i mean i mean there's 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 value in that but mm-hmm. um you know once we've had a taste of it mm-hmm. you know there's going to be it's going to take a lot to kind of get people to go you know even as a speaker i look at it and i go okay well here's my fee we've kind of transferred that over for <laughs> online so if you want me live that's going to be more yeah, you bet. <laughs> because, you know, because I have to take that block of time away. I have to travel. It's, um, you know, it, it's not to say there's not value in that, but I think we're going to pick and choose. Mm-hmm. Right. You bet. I really believe that the pie is being enlarged yes. and then yes. there would be some proportion that are live, some portion of that is live, some portion in person. I mean, some person of that would be, uh, you know, virtual and, and whatnot, and some would be hybrid. And, and then and just the, the whole event, where you know it's going to be much much bigger but it'll be divided it, you know there's multiple ways to do it mm-hmm. you can do it in person only uh, you know virtual only or hybrid uh, and and you know uh, yeah. kind of like how vehicles or cars have been you know made where there's a lot of options for transportation you know in the old days there's only one or two ways to do transportation and people hold on to that and say like that's the only way but we have discovered that there's many valid ways to do transportation and each with us its own challenges, uh, its own positive, right? Right. And just, just everything has grown, right? And even just, uh, you take publicity, you know, earned media and publicity, right? You might have previously reached out to local radio stations or your local kind of stuff, or maybe gone for a national publication. I mean, now you can be the expert from afar on a split screen TV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so all of a sudden you can be interviewed, you can pitch and be interviewed on a, uh, you know, a, a podcast or a program in Brisbane and uh, you, you're coming in with a different global perspective. And so, you know, th- there's just one little piece example of, uh, you know, and, and doing those gigs, you know, I, I, I did something in India. Right. I, and, you know, and it was their morning. It was my <laughs> late evening. And, you know, and so I had to kind of pretend, you know, talk about, you know, good morning. And I had my coffee and, you know, <laughs> and, um, you know and then and then they they went on with the rest of their day. And, you know, and I wrapped it up and went and had a glass of wine with my husband. Right? Like it's, I mean, that's kind of good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In other words, now we really plug in with the people based on interests yes. rather than based on, you know, locations or based on organizations or, in other words, uh, 
the boundaries have changed in terms of what is being, uh, you know, the the pr primary boundary setting uh, criteria are being changed, right? Significantly. Yeah, but, but there's an example uh, that that opportunity would not have been available to me, right? right. In pre-COVID, you bet. Well, you maybe bet. it would have been, but oh, I, yeah. you know, uh, unlikely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wonderful. Now, so. I'm going to turn it over to you, Mary, to uh, to take us out to uh, now you can take us out um, as I offer to many of my guests. You can sing a song if oh, you want. I don't you, sing. You, I don't you sing. Can, you my can daughter play. sings. The, 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 musical, the musical gene pool ended right there. <laughs> or actually skip the generation. <laughs> I was going to say you can play an instrument and play a song. You can sing. You oh. can um, read us a poem. You can. Oh, gosh. Uh, summarize some uh, key thoughts you can do anything so mm. uh but before before we do that let me say a couple of things one is sure. uh, when we're done here just hang around in the green room for a couple of minutes and I'll, I'll be there and okay. i will uh, give you a high five there and a virtual okay. hug but you know um uh, folks uh thank you for tuning in uh, both live and uh, you know in the recorded version here later on if you have uh, comments or questions for mary feel free to put it in the comments there and, and uh we will uh, definitely get married to uh, look at them and, and, and uh, respond as appropriate uh, in, a, in a reasonable manner, time-wise. But uh, uh, have a great day, folks. Uh, till we meet again, uh, take good care of yourself, take good care of one another. And uh, you have been listening to Mary Charlson, and, uh, who has a rich history of many diverse things. And uh, one of the key things that I got from her is that uh, you want to bring all the different aspects of life and mix it in together and really live a richer life. So with that, Mary, take us out in any which way. No rush, take take your time. Well, you know, as I said, I don't sing. I, <laughs> I don't have a ukulele. <laughs> you know, I would just leave with a few parting thoughts. And I would just say, you know, pursue your passion uh, wherever that takes you. And uh, don't be afraid to to do it. Because if not, you know, it's 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 the old, you know, Gretzky, you know, you, 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 don't, you don't score unless you shoot and uh you know and take a shot uh, pursue your passions and and hopefully by sort of you know in some of the things that we've shared and, and i do thank you for this opportunity dune is is to you know to, to be yourself be your authentic self uh serve people you know uh do good and uh and then good befalls you as well and um and and again thanks thanks again dune this has been a it's been my pleasure to uh, share this time and uh pull back the curtain and uh, maybe show a little bit of the backside of some of the things that, uh, that, uh, of what I do in my life. Well, thank you so much, Mary. And uh, again, have a wonderful rest of your day. And you still got one more hour than I, I have yes. here in this day because you're in the west, uh, yes. further west yes. there and uh, Pacific time. So uh, have a great day, folks. Thank you so much, Jim. Take care. Thank you, Mary. Okay. Yeah.